this computer. Boom. Beep. And am I sharing the right screen? I think so. Screen sharing. Here you go. Yeah. All right. So Tam. Oh hell yeah. Yeah. This is looking. This is looking great. Yeah. I'm liking. I'm liking this stuff that you got going here. Um. Yeah. Definitely ready for retopo, and I can see that you've already been pushing on this. Yeah. Hell yeah. Wonderful. Yeah. This even the the topology of the face is looking really good. Tam, what did you what did you use to uh, look at reference for this? Did you just like look at Sketchfab, or did you Google that uh, that stuff, or the Danny Mac video? Like that one was pretty mm -hmm. like spot on. Like even yeah. the body, I think, was good. Like I need to find something for the hands now, but like yeah, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. yeah. Hand, hands are uh, hands are annoying for sure, yeah. but uh, but yeah, this is looking fantastic. This is looking fantastic. Yeah, hell yeah, yeah, this is sick. I haven't like done anything for the project, so like if anything needs to be changed for that, I can. Like, Sorry, what was that? I, I actually wanted to fix, like um figure that out. Like, so I'm doing the body separately, so it's fine if I do the like V top of the clothes later on, right? Like separately. Yeah, one hundred percent. Yeah, yeah. Okay. That, that that's like how they would. That that's more how they would be in like a a, a film. Um, because usually they have their their your your base mesh, your character, and then you have like a cloth sim, like clothes on top of that. Um, and, uh, same for, for some video games, like if you have like swap outable clothes, usually you have like a base mesh character underneath everything and then you have all the clothes on top of it. Um, but yeah, so some other things might go as far as to like, since you don't, since you're not going to see anything like from like this thigh up above until like the neck and then the hands, you'd probably just to apologize all this is like one hunk going up in there but uh but yeah for for as far as like um as this class though you should probably do each piece separately what you could do because this is this shawl is kind of like thin right and this this uh jacket's kind of thin as well you might want to just do um depending on how thin this is, you might just do one side. You might just do one side of it. Um, but yeah, it's just, that's gonna depend on how thin it is. It looks like it's pretty thin, but. Uh, yeah, I, I did give it some thickness this morning, but like, it's not, it's just enough so that it doesn't disappear when you turn it around. Yeah, 100%, yeah. Um, but yeah, no, this is looking fantastic though. Yeah, and I, I like, yeah, this, this face, Amazing retopo job there. Amazing. Uh, it's gonna it's gonna be perfect. Um, I do think, yeah, if you do have a separate object for that, the uh like the eyebrow and stuff, yeah, I would retopo that yeah, separately yeah. as well. Yeah. That, that's a separate one. Yeah, yeah. I, I would just retopo that separate as well. But uh, but yeah, you guys can quickly see how this is kind of adding up in retopo time, right? Like all this stuff is gonna like each each segment's gonna take a while to to retopo, right? Um, so just be careful about your time. Uh, Tam, I think you're on, on track for sure. Like this is looking like, like, uh, you're making good speed here. Um, but yeah, you might, for some of these pieces, you might be able to get away with doing a Z remesh half and using that as your re apologize part. That is 100% not how we do it, but if you're running out of time, that might be a way that you can kind of cut a, cut a few corners. Um, but the, again, that's 100% not how we do it in the industry. Like you, you, you retopo all your stuff um, yourself okay. by hand. Um, but yeah, but the, I, I don't think you'll need to resort to that uh, because simply because this is looking really good so far. Um, okay. Let's see. Uh, how do y'all, man? <laughs> But yeah, fantastic work. Awesome stuff. Um, oh, Gracia, this is, uh, let's see, did you end up? Hell yeah. Okay, cool, cool. Nice, nice. We'll get back to you later. Uh, David doing some retopology on the, on the helmet. Perfect, perfect. Helmet is one of the more difficult spots on your model, so I think this is a fantastic place to, to sink some time into. And it's honestly looking great. It's honestly looking great. Uh, you'll you'll want to go over some of these with like holding shift and relaxing that mesh a little bit because some of these some of these faces are getting a little bit 
uh, stretched out, you know. So it might be good to uh, it might be good to just go over with shift a little bit. Just make sure you're not losing that nice crease that you have. Like if, if this is following like a, a cool hard edge crease of your helmet, just make sure that you don't stray too far from that with with the relax brush or, or the, the relax feature on quad draw. Um, also for you quad drawers, remember uh, if it starts going slow, you can always go to edit, delete all by type. Uh, history, you can go edit, delete all by type history in here. Um, and that'll speed up the uh, Maya because Maya can really chug when you're re apologizing stuff. Um, let's see, back to here. But yeah, this is looking fantastic, dude. You're, you, I can see that you're, you're really thinking about the, the edge flow of this stuff. And, uh, and yeah, some of this looks like a little bit somewhat questionable right here, like how the, these like stretch out this way. Um, you might want to try to divert some of this like under the nose and back into it on this side, like some of these edge loops, like instead of, instead of like terminating in here, maybe uh, bring one of them on the out, outer loop right here. Um, but overall, it's looking phenomenal, dude. Yeah, really good, really good job retopoing. Um, yeah, man. Yeah, this is really, really solid. David, you never retopoed anything before, have you? No, uh, not an animation one either. Yeah, right. Yeah, because that was that was pretty Z rush in that class. Yeah, damn, dude, good stuff. Good work. Cool, thanks. Also, there's some points that I couldn't touch. Is that because it's two folded into the mesh? Yeah, yeah, most likely. Ooh, oh. like, like you're talking about like some of these verts, right? Yeah, yeah, like the little dots or whatever. Yeah, yeah. So what what's happening when you can't touch them is that uh, there might be a surface underneath that surface. Um, I'm a little bit worried for Tam on this on this clothing for this reason because if 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 Maya detects the other side of that clothing. Sometimes it can, when you're quad drawing, it can just warp that vert to the backside and then just, it's really annoying in there. So yeah, if you, if you, um, if you delete like the inside of this, you'll have a, you might have an easier time in some, some areas. Uh, also David, it's, it's dependent on where the camera is. So like if, if you're, if you're having trouble selecting a vert in there, you can kind of orbit the camera around and kind of move it out uh, manually. Um, sometimes you'll have to exit quad draw entirely and like go into your like move tool, select that vert only, and then force forcefully push it to the surface. Um, that that definitely happens sometimes. So yeah, that can that can really be annoying. Um, but it looks like you're doing a, a great job though. I, I would just yeah, my only tip would be use it, use the. Uh, Relax brush on some or the, the relax feature in quad draw on this. That's yeah. Holding shift and left click dragging over it. Um, but yeah, yeah, awesome work though, dude. Oh, also, is there like any way to connect, to connect the entire loop and make it smooth or no? Is it just only parts of it? Only only parts of it. It's like Damn, it's right. like basically a brush. So like okay. you just hold shift and you kind of just go over the mesh in, in different parts. But yeah, like I said, sometimes it'll it'll pull your verts into a place that you don't want. Uh, particularly on stuff like this, where it's like lining that nice hard edge of the of the helmet, so just be careful of that. Cool, thank you. No problem. Looking for, looking fantastic, dude. Uh, and then we got Sammy updating us. Let's see. Here we go. Oh hell yeah! Nice. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This is good. this is looking good. This is looking good. Again, you you, you have some some problems with uh, momentum here, on here on the on this leap. So it's like you can see, like on each footstep, that that pelvis is kind of losing that forward momentum. But think about like a long jump person. Like they 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 start sprinting. And they have all that runway to get up to full speed. And then they jump at no part in that is their pelvis slowing down, right? It's perpetually speeding up. So if you can make this one clean 
one clean uh, like acceleration out of here, then it's gonna be it looks so much more convincing, right? So like look at look at the spacing of the hips on here, and then right there, like so you 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 have like a a stutter in there. Um, so so just think of it like a like like a bouncing ball kind of like like it that bouncing ball is going forward at a constant speed, right? But it's still it's still kind of bouncing with each each uh well bounce as dumb as that sounds but like but yeah so that's just going like at a constant speed i know you have some um you have some what the hell california city california is calling me what the, i didn't even know that, oh. that was a place <laughs> california that sounds fake as fuck that's um, a little suspicious right that is they're 100 gonna try to steal my social security number absolutely um, but yeah, so just just think about that. I know you do have your main controls moving during some of these parts. Yeah. So there could be some like some something in that that might be tripping you up, you know? Yeah. Um, yeah. Um, do you I feel like the running part especially, I'm having a lot of issues making it look like she's running right now. She looks like she's stomping and like Yeah. yeah. I I I've tried to fix it, but it's just not working. Um, do you have, have do. do you have the reference for me? Yeah, it, it might be a, it might be something in the reference that we can kind of draw inspiration upon, or it might be something that like sometimes we just got to go off the reference, dude. Sometimes we just gotta. I, I mean, I used one of my students as a reference, and she's not perfect, but. She tries her darndest. Let me make sure this is the right one. She's not doing it exactly the way I wanted, but it's okay. Um, here. Boop. Let's put it um in the chat right quick. Oh yeah. It is hard being a spider person. I agree. There we go. Yeah, okay, okay. Okay. So high into low, remains low, little bit of a hop, 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 and then big jump. Okay, so what do we have here? Boom. Two, three, okay, okay. So you're gonna need to, okay. I think the reason that it's stomping, it looks so stomping right here is because um, of the up and down motion of the hips. Okay. The problem is, is that if you, if you don't go up as high as it is, um, you might, your strides might look a little bit weird because you're not like leaving the ground let's look at our reference again yeah so there's like a there's like a frame okay so it's it's, it's just like one frame yeah we can we can get by that um do, 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 do. Yeah, yeah. What are, well, yeah, you're you're gonna need to kind of mentally work with with the, that animation or that that reference. So, or, or all right, so let's just let's just look at it. You know. So yeah, it's definitely a a big issue with the the pelvis. One, not enough hang time right here. 
with this. Okay. So boom, you see how, see how that, that momentum immediately goes down again. It need to be like a, like instead, instead of going like, like as it yeah. is right here, you be more, have a little bit of a graceful pop right there, like add a little bit of hang time. I know it might not look like the reference, but I think it will add to the sort of the grace of the piece. So like a little bit of hang time and then not as much up down on, on the, the pelvis here kind okay. of almost keep it like a a nice arc like a, a nice arc from this let me see if i can get my stupid uh wake on to to work sometimes i need to restart the services here we go let's see oh it's looking good it's looking good so let's go in here, boom. Uh, more hang time. So do from here on out, it's kind of like if you visually track that pelvis, it's kind of making jagged arcs mm -hmm. in there. What you're probably looking for is something like with the hang time in there and then going in there off that off that cliff. So if you can just smooth all of this out, um, it's gonna it's gonna look weird the first time you do it. Okay. Like if you just if you just really force that that pelvis to have that arc, it's gonna look a little bit weird and smooth. Uh, but then I think you could work with the the, the steps because you, you see that your student does have some up and down mm -hmm. on the pelvis here. But see, see like the overall arc up and then down, low strides, low strides, and then big, big jump at the end. So th this jump would be off of that building, right? Yeah. Um, and then look at where, look at where their arms go to anticipate. They go up high, uh, like high up and back. Okay. To anticipate that. So you, you'll, you might need to do, um, it, it'll just take some experimentation, but yeah, I see, I see your, your arms are, are low, but you, you, you don't have that, that, that high up kind of, uh, silhouette that they, that they had before they were about to jump like the, wah, this, then we get a little bit of the downturned hands for, for more grace. Because mm -hmm. um, grace is the name of the game when we're doing some ballerina stuff. Let's look at the rest of their pose for that. So that's when, that's when they're contacting. That's what, so like the, the, when that front foot is contacting, that's when it's in this pose instead I put it on the wrong frame, right? So let's look at the frame where you're contacting now with the foot. Oh, that was it. Okay, so you need to give yourself a little bit more time to, to contact that foot. Um, like, because I think this foot step is like probably a little bit too deep in there. Okay. Maybe maybe have that, that foot planted back here instead of where it goes. There, let's see Just like this. Because if we're still trying to follow that arc, that arc is going to go up this way. And then on the hop up, you're going to need, oof, yeah. Hmm. That's interesting. We might have to adapt to this because of the ridge right here. Mm -hmm. Because in our reference, we have no ridge that we're jumping off. Yeah. Um, and in order to, like, this would, would almost, that, that would barely get them onto the ledge, basically. Yeah. With this. So you might need, like, a double of this. Let's see. So they're, they're, it's kind of out to the side. Let's see. So it's like almost it's like a graceful naruto run almost pretty um, yeah i she's not doing that right but it's all right 
Oh, okay. What is what what is proper? So she's hyperextending kind of a lot, but you're supposed to keep them basically at your side more than back. But I feel like since she was trying to get a lot of speed, a lot of speed, yeah, she defaults to like pushing them back a little bit. Okay. So okay. So so here it wouldn't be as far back as this, right? Yeah. Um, it would be it'd be more out here yeah and you said not hyper extended right yeah so like the, the arms aren't locked during this like they're not uh for in dance hyper extend just means like your arms are going behind you oh um, okay interesting okay different different vocab there yeah but um they'd be straight but just not like as far back as she has them yeah hmm, interesting okay i mean you could probably get away with doing it a little bit because i mean yeah. to make it look believable to, I, I think i think for like this jump you might need to pull them back a little bit like okay. on the anticipation but yeah try to get a pose in here with the you might you might have to bring this this leg forward obviously the the pelvis wouldn't be this low um but you'll you'll that that body will basically be following that line of action Mm -hmm. that the that, that the hips are about to take when you jump so arms could be out here and and basically just jumping one footed this would be straight right there and yeah so Basically, yeah, you need to establish that line of the pelvis and then get your posing to really follow with that. Okay. And your current arc has like a little lateral movement and then a pop-up. Instead, it just needs to be one fluid motion on the other side. But yeah, so let's look at the rest of this. I've been going through and switching my controls on all the straight arms because I'm tired of dealing with that elbow thing. Um, so I just switched them to the other one. FK. I keep getting them confused. Oh, the, the elbow thing. Oh, you did just a lot of FK. Yeah. Like that you're doing, you're basically, this is all like rotations then, right? Yeah. Yeah. hundred percent. Yeah. No, it, it, it gets clean arcs. Um, the only thing is that it doesn't hold in like space very well, right? Because it'll mm -hmm. just rotate with the body, but that's fine. Uh, like I would, ro I, I would animate the majority of this piece in FK, and it's it's good. Uh, you, you have a big pelvis pop on this on this frame, so uh, definitely delete delete a key here. Mm -hmm. Delete pelvis key. because that's creating a pop in there. Um, but yeah. Also a little bit of a, a little bit of a weird rotation there too. Like see how, how straight up they are and then kind of like rotates on X a little bit. Mm -hmm. um, like just like sideways. It looks a yeah. little bit, a little bit unrealistic. And if, if, the, if the reference does that, then they're they're most likely that that's happening in the spine as well. Like you, you'd see that carried out through the spine. Right now, it just kind of looks like we can tell that that's a control that's just pivoting like the rest of the body there. Yeah. So get get some more realism in here. Uh, more natural rotate. Rotate. Boop, boop, boop. So about this, this hand pose is kind of a bit weird. Yeah, I don't know what, what that's about. I, I don't know who did that, but it was definitely not me. <laughs> Certainly not. Hand pose.
again, the, the way the pelvis kind of gets into this pose right here, it's not as convincing. Definitely feel free to track it with um, that motion trail track um, right here. Or would you want to, uh, like later in this class, like send me the um, file and I could, I could clean up some of this stuff and, and you could watch along with that? Uh, yeah. Because I, I want to make sure that you know what I'm talking about here. So it like hits a wall right there. Yeah. Body hits the hits an invisible wall. Bod hits wall. And then it hits another wall on the way out right there. See how it just suddenly starts rotating forward. Sudden move forward. On bod. On bod. Um, and then, yeah. Do you think it would be worth it once I finish, um, like making this clean ish? Um, do you think it'd be worth it to change the hand poses? Because right now it's just at default the whole time. Yeah. 100 percent yeah hand okay. poses are very very important too because like they they just add a lot to the character and the grace weird arm ew ew don't yeah, gross right? there, Absolutely there's some not. there's some there's some arm crumpling in here it yeah. looks like this I, might be an ik still throughout here oh yeah it is i haven't um changed that yet that's today's mission yeah, is yeah. getting all of this up through that and then fixing that whole mess yeah um the yeah. part where it cuts off i think to go to the other camera is i think i'm gonna make it the step up so like it, during here right yeah like right where the camera stops basically yeah oh yeah nice nice but yeah, yeah she's she's a little crunchy right now but it'll be crunchy. it'll be cute well i mean it's it's coming along nice this first part is looking really really good now yeah like the the those those first two hops are like looking really yeah. solid you can just see the difference on them, you know. She's starting to look alive, and I'm so excited. Right. Yeah, once you what there's like a there's like a uh, uncanny valley where like once you start crossing it, it's just like oh yeah, oh, we're cooking now, you know. So sick, but yeah, awesome stuff. Thanks for sharing. Thanks for sharing. That. For sure. And uh, then yeah, feel um, free to send me that file, and then I can open up later. Uh, yeah, let me do that right I, now. After I get through everyone's critiques. Um, could you show me later how to export it, like with the transparent background, so that oh, I can put that, the sky that, in? Yeah, that's gonna take some uh, experimentation on my side because I haven't done that in years. Okay. But, uh, but yeah, for sure. Word. Thank you. One hundred percent. All right. Let's see. What do we have here? Ye. Oh, so sick. Yeah. Ye, you're, you're you're gonna need to uh, speed it up just a little bit, but like what you have is looking phenomenal. I love I love the proportions. You're really nailing all this stuff. Um, yeah, once you just get the uh, once you get these little fabrics in there, and then uh, now these these eyes are a little bit like anime eyes, uh, so they can be kind of flat in there. Uh, you see that ZBrush does have a anime uh, did you do project in here? Yeah, anime head demo. So for the eye space, just kind of look at what they've done. See how it's basically a flat surface in here. You might want to do that. That that makes that makes sense. Yeah, yeah. So see how it's flat, but it also still has. Um, a little bit of that, um, like the, the, a little bit of the, the uh, eyebrow in there, like that, that form kind of juts out right there. And also for the cheek, it also comes out there. So, so try to try to do something similar to that with this. Yeah. You're like 90% there. I think you just need like a little bit of a flatter surface in there and then you'll be good to go. Um, just be sure that it matches the, the, the size of this 
part right here of this eye. Um, but yeah, that's gonna look great. Um, let's see, anything else? No, hair's looking pretty good. Um, for your hair, you have little cutouts in there. Um, sometimes, not all the times, but sometimes, let's, let's just kind of get like a fake hair going for your, for, for this character. Um, really quick. Oh no, computer's going dramatically slow. Here we go. So fake hair, really quick. Let's go, let's go. Do, do, do. Some tool. Let's make sure this is all off there. Extract. Ah, no. Extract. Um, let's turn this on to like 0 0.01. Let's try that. Extract. Does that look right? Extract. No, 0 0.02. I was lying. 0 0.03 even. Let's do that. Extract. Oh yeah, look good. Um, except then geometry, Z remesh, Z remesh. Uh, let's do half, keep groups, smooth groups, Z remesh. Um, Z remesh is in progress, it's going slow. No, it's supposed to be a fast demo. Mike, how could you do this to us? Sorry about this. Just trying to get this, just some placement, placement hair in here. Um, because there's a nice little way of getting, getting those little shapes out. So if we have, if we have some hair like this, and then I want to Z remesh half again. Unfortunately, sorry, my friends. It should go doubly as fast though this time because there's half as many polys. Ah, okay. So sometimes, not all the time, but sometimes we can get it away with holding control and shift. And then in here, you'll see select rectangle, but instead, if you go to trim lasso, Sometimes we can get this to work nicely. Boom. And then if I, I'm holding control and shift again. And oh, didn't work, didn't take. There we go. Wrong way though. Did the right way the first time. ZBrush just didn't. Come on, ZBrush. There you go. So see that? You get a nice little, nice little cutout in there. And then it would just take some time to refine the little, the side pieces in there. Um, looks like my first cut got in there too. But yeah, so that's a nice way of getting that little thing in there. I would probably Z remesh again to, to sort of fix the, the flow around there. But yeah, that could be, that could be very beneficial for you. Um, let's see what else on the character. Hat's coming in nicely. Um, yeah, looking pretty sick. Feet could use a little bit of work, but uh, yeah, that's fine. If you have an extra hand around, my senior project is almost finished. I can spend my time on this project now. Hell yeah, E. Hell yeah. Yeah, I, I look forward to it. I, I know this is, it seems like you have a good a good handle on like form and proportion. So I'm sure like the, the, the feet and, and the hands are gonna be fantastic. Um, yeah, you might. Since the hands are kind of like hidden in here, you could get away with just having, so let's get like a sleeve in there that's pretending to be, um, that's pretending to be the sleeve, boom. In here, rotate, scale, boom, scale again. So this is our pretend sleeve. And then um, append sphere, let's move this. You could straight up just, since like not much of that hand is exposed, you 
and potentially just go in and, uh, you know, fake it, right? So you could just soften this up and go to C remesh half. So I like working low. There you go. C remesh, and then let's use build up. Kind of punch in on here. Sorry, my computer goes really slow when I'm recording. And then it gives me like wild lines in there. Uh, damn standard. And then let's do Z remesh same. So see, see how I'm just kind of faking that because it's in a fist pose in that um, reference image. Like we're not going to be rigging this character, right? So feel free to take some liberties on the modeling end. Right here. So see, I'm just faking that hand. Definitely worth giving a go there, right? Like if we can just save some time on making a whole new hand in here, like what, this is like five minutes and it, it already, or it doesn't look too bad. I mean, it's it, the proportion's awful. Like this is like a Hulk hand compared to the size of the, the character, but like you, you get the you get the idea. Like we could definitely um, save a lot of time there by doing that. Let's do a BTD trim dynamic to kind of harden up the top of here. And yeah, so you go. So feel free to to give that a go. And then if you get it to a good point, uh, then you can just geometry divide, divide, and you can start messing with uh, finer details, like getting these divots even more, even more sculpted out in here. Kind of get the knuckle and stuff, but yeah. But yeah, so definitely look into that. I think you could really benefit from that. But this is looking phenomenal so far, good stuff, good stuff. All right, Ricardo, what do you got for us? Let's see it, Ricardo. Nice, nice. Yeah, I'm pretty far behind. I just want to finish this today so I can get to the fighting stuff. Yeah, 100%. Here, yeah, I no, think it's looking great. And let me post the other angle because this is still in play last, and I don't know if I can. I have the other angle, right? Let me just edit message. Wait, that's not it. Message. That. Okay, then, yeah, it should be right underneath the first one. Do, do, do. Oh, you old sneaky boy. Hell yeah. yeah. All right, let's see this. Man, my computer is running slow. Oh no. I'm gonna close Unity. Cause Jesus Christ. <laughs> Sorry about that. Is this is what making game is like? Oh hell yeah. Pretty much. It's just all programs, all time, all code. It's closed down. Visual Studio, we don't need this bad boy. Eep. But not for everyone though, right? That's just because I'm an indie dev. So if you're working in a big studio, you ain't looking at code ever, dude, unless you want it. <laughs> so, yeah. Then I'm gonna have to delete the wall so it doesn't block it. I, I think it's kind of cool though, like if you, yeah, I, I, I don't know. This is a cool angle. Oh, it's Ango. <laughs> this is a cool angle for sure. Like, I don't know. You could like maybe cut away. Yeah, that's what like right halfway through like the the slide under the the wall thing. I'm going to cut to this. 
I was gonna do like a backward shot, like if something's chasing, but then I realized my run looks like shit when you're straight up <laughs> looking at <laughs> from the back. back. Yeah, yeah. I'm like, oh, that looks really robotic. God, no. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That is it's definitely a it's definitely a thing. So it's good that you're thinking about animating to camera though, because that's uh, very much a uh, very much a thing. But yeah, this, this is looking sick. Like it'd almost be cool, like if yeah, I don't know. Yeah, because I like this angle. It's pretty dope. Um, but like if that door was in there, it'd be blocking that off already. So yeah. maybe you could just cheat it and have the door like lowering slower a little bit and just for this shot. And you could get oh, a and little like bit. it just slowly like it's just it's just like kind of it, it's like in there still, or like a, it's like a little bit lower, like a like the camera oh, yeah. go a little bit lower. So then you could like look up a little bit and uh -huh. see it see it kind of enclosing in because that'd be cool and then cut away when you when you're like doing the settle uh yeah. to like a, a different camp that's like in a safer spot you know when it's not being crushed but it's it's kind of a cool angle but but yeah wait let's go back to the other one yeah so i'm gonna probably work at like the, the little bit of the ending animation where it's just breathing and uh and what else yeah camera angle is just setting up all that just so i can finish that today yeah yeah get, get it get it uh slapped together remember you only have five weeks only five weeks so if you get this done today then you get a full week to start on the next one so um yeah so please please get this done today um i do think that you could benefit from the a, a similar thought process that sammy could benefit from um and that's just think think of your character as a bouncing ball right mm -hmm. like it doesn't have to you, you you will like i mean there are a bunch of limbs and stuff right but like if you just think about like because i'm seeing right here like the the acceleration for the for the hips kind of comes out of nowhere right yeah like you kind of need to kind of need to launch that like you kind of need to think of this this right here as just a ball like don't even think about arms just think about ball using the stick legs to propel it right mm -hmm. so it would need um and if you, if you do that you can kind of it, it, it like really like kind of locks in like where your feet need to be in order to push this through so like in order to get this acceleration you would need that little a little um a little clean dip down and scrunch up and then extend in here so then ball going this way Whoa. you can push this out and then ball going ball continuing and then get the like the you overlap the the foot into position and then this one starts to pull up and gets into your sliding position um, because both you and sammy have momentum changes on that on that ball that should be constant but are a little bit staggered in your animation so so definitely look at cleaning up your uh your pelvis in the future right it's, mm -hmm. gonna be, it's your most important control on the character because it, it, it's I, it's where your character's position is, you know. So you need that you need that bend down of the ball. It'd be like a little bit squashed in here, you know, just like that squirrel. Just think about how that squirrel was at the very beginning of the semester. Oh yeah. So like that that's that's just important because like that tail shows where it's coming from in this pose. Our leg is showing where we're coming from here. Our leg is showing that it's like when it's kind of jumping off that surface you know that's where our leg is coming from um or that's where our tail would be coming from on that squirrel mm -hmm. rig you know um but yeah it's looking great though dude it's looking great let's see like halfway through this like oh they should be jumping over something halfway through the run and i'm like no no <laughs> don't no, do that <laughs> no time no time yeah if anything you could just add like a like if you want them running away from something on like one of these backs, like right here, mm -hmm. uh, you could just do like a, a quick, um, 
like open this this chest out a little bit more, like twist it this way. Gun a little bit even more down, and then arm out like here, mm -hmm. and have Samus looking under her arm right here, kind of back. Mm, okay. Mid stride, you know, like a, like think of like a swimmer when they're breathing during the the freestyle. Like how you kind of do that. That's how you get your breath during the swim, you know. Like think about that. Uh, like if you if you wanted to spice that the 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 run cycle up, you know. Yeah. Um. Now I'm thinking about like the Dead Island trailer, like the first one that came out with the running girl, and it's all backwards. Oh, oh yeah, yeah. That. Yeah. It might be good to look at. I don't know. Yeah, I gotta rewatch that. But yeah, one hundred percent. But yeah, so yeah, if you wanted to spice that up, feel free. It'd be mm -hmm. the same similar way that uh, that uh, those Disney animators spiced up that that Frozen scene where uh, Elsa or Anna, I don't know their name, but I think it's Elsa. Elsa was running like through that cave, like she just blocked out the the run, got the run going, and then. Uh, changed it to just modulated it once those keys were in there to have her like rubbing her hand on the ice of the wall and stuff mm -hmm. um yeah you could definitely benefit from doing that as well you could also do that on something that i haven't talked about much but simply because i don't want you guys relying on it um but animation layers they're pretty oh, dope yeah. they're pretty dope um i could i could talk about that in fact uh i might i might this class um, just, just so you can see what I'm talking about, but animation layers are basically animation on top of your animation. And that sounds very dumb, but it's like, if you have a walk cycle and it's like, and, and, and your keys are looking good and you're just walking around, but then you need a squatted, a squatting version of it, like a, a more alert version, then you can just on an animation layer, add that waist control and then move it down. And then suddenly it'll be your same walk, but the but the pelvis will just be lower, you know? So you, and then you can just zero out that key to bring it back to normal. Um, but yeah, I could show a little bit of that about that as well. But I don't want you guys really using that because it's, um, one, it could confuse you guys if you're working with controls and you're like, where's this animation coming from? Then you have to look at like, all your controls and then also all your layers so that can be very annoying but um but yeah i think it's i think it's worthwhile talking about just a little bit but uh i don't want you guys to rely on it for a multitude of reasons but yeah do, 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 do. all right good stuff for carl okay. you, I, I, do you have did you show anything for your next animation oh, yeah. do? it was like a fight scene with dark link and zelda it's just oh like yeah yeah that's right that's right it's in, the, it's in the very starting phases but yeah. but yeah yeah uh just do do a little bit of cleanup on this one um mm -hmm. I, I don't think it goes far as like messing I, I don't i don't think you need to necessarily add that like look back or anything but but yeah you're you're like really close on that one so can just keep just keep going try to get into that next scene though uh, uh, yeah yeah you're, you're gonna be running out of time um all right benny Benny, okay, hell yeah. Okay, I see I see even more musculature on this. Very nice. Very nice. Do, 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 do. Yeah, looking good on the horse. Uh Benny, what, what's this what's the end goal of this character? Uh end goal for this character. Um well, I'm trying to figure out how to right now get the fingers on him, but I am struggling because I know I started working on this a little later than most of the people working yeah. on models. So I'm thinking either I just go with for my my own personal use a base model uh with like a, a, a every man kind of face i can just go back to this duplicate the file and then make it more form fitting to any male character i want to make kind of move the proportions around mm -hmm. um or uh what my initial goal with this character was was to have it fully clothed with the face but it's a lot of work starting from right now and then also we apologizing it over in maya yeah so i'm thinking i might just go with the base model instead um wow. And just just keep that because I already worked on some of the muscles. So I figured, well, it doesn't hurt just to have something like that. 
you yeah. know, inventory. Um, yeah, well, it, what Benny's talking about with this base model stuff is uh, definitely done in the industry. So, like, if you have, if you get, like, assign a new character, usually a studio has, like, a base mesh that you can use and then you can start with that has, like, all the topology already done, everything, like, planned out there, um, good proportions on everything. Um, and then you just bring that into ZBrush and you start sculpting on it. And then, uh, yeah, so that's definitely very much a thing. Um, but yeah, I think, you, I, I don't know, I think you go for a, a, a full character though. You have, you have five weeks left. Uh, since you did start on substance stuff before, I, I would be willing to have you um, just uh, like, if, if you wanted to stay in ZBrush, you potentially could um but i think you would get a lot out of you know texturing another character too you know mm -hmm. um so so I'd, I'd like to see you go for it but um but yeah it's up to you it's up to you because a, a, a base mesh is is worthwhile you know um but yeah i i think i think going for well even if because you could potentially just do the bust of the character you know if if, you, if you're if you don't want to go for a full character um i'd be i'd be perfectly fine with that as well uh but it, it would it, just because it'd be it'd be cool to see you realize a concept from zbrush to maya back to substance painter so mm -hmm. yeah i don't know well, what what kind of what kind of character would you be doing if you were to do a character uh just a character i've been working on working with this character for a couple different projects and i figured i want to see what they look like in a 3d space yeah. um so yeah yeah. Well, do you have any reference for that character? I do. I do have reference for that character. Let me see if I can pull it up. I'll drop it into the Discord. Let me see here. Oh, yeah. Because if, it, if it's not too extravagant, then you might be able to go for it. But we do only have five weeks left. Yeah. Let me see here. It's the problem. Is he in here? Yeah, I thought he'd be in here. Sorry, I thought I, I didn't think I'd be having to look look for. Oh this. yeah, no, of course not. I put you on the spot, no, so it's my let fault me, if anything. It's okay. <laughs> let me see if I can, because I have a, a fully clothed version of this. Well, actually, let me see here. Let me go. There we go. I have this version. I'll just crop it and make a copy of this character. Okay, there we go. There we go. I just uh, yeeted on there the reference to the character. Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, that's not too, that's not too, that's not too bad. I, th I think you could go for this. Um, hmm. The only, the only thing would be the face and the hair. So the face, face and hair takes a while yeah um that's what was tripping me up because the clothes i'm sure i could slap on there no problem once yeah. i figure out how to you know how to do that so i don't it's, know how yet <laughs> but... it, it would just be that extract method that i was showing okay um th that'd be very simple like I, I you could definitely get a good set of pants and good good clothes in in like a day mm. the the head and the hair what what worries me though yeah that's what was worrying me too because i know it's a, it's a very particular looking face i figured oh it's gonna be hard to kind of just replicate well it's also just kind of more uh more realistic you know yeah um, and that that just takes a lot of well i i still think it'd be worth it though so it may maybe hmm. Hmm. yeah i don't know we'll, we'll we'll talk later we'll talk later about about like what you could do because i think i think there's there's a few options here because i i would like to see you go for um a face and, and the, the hair because like it, you, you'll get so much out of doing that you know because mm -hmm. uh, i uploaded just the just the head yeah. zoomed in because discord doesn't let people zoom in yeah yeah because it has like rigid 
shapes so you could you'll, you'll definitely get a lot of good experience with different brushes in here um yeah i i would say at, at least go for for getting the face in there as well um but yeah if you if you want to if you want to maybe simplify it maybe just dial it back to almost something like this like just like a bust mm -hmm. uh, just with like a little bit of more of the arms in there for the for at least for this class then that'd be cool um so then what if you wanted to go with base mesh human that would also be cool because base mesh would include the it would include the face in there as well. right so what you're saying is either go for the full body here but for the class just doing a bust not we're not continuing this body we're just working on the bust to get mm -hmm. the face done you think uh, that also be okay? I think that would also be okay. Yeah, because you can you could definitely get the face done, um, and then the, like the shoulders and a little bit of the arm done. It would be like cropped, basically where my mouse is. Mm -hmm. That that would be where the the bust ends up. Okay. Um, that way you get like a little bit of the detailing of the clothes in there as well. Okay. Uh, but I think you definitely do that because uh, I see what you can do in Maya already, and that's with. Uh, peasant tools basically so <laughs> i'm sure you can do more in in zbrush but yeah i, I think it'd be really great to see tackle a face okay then in, in that case i'll go ahead and, and pause where my body is and uh begin work on a face to get this because the face is really what i wanted to get done the body is it's easy to draw mm -hmm. easy to model but a, a face is it's a face so. it's a face yeah very very much so very difficult to get something that's nice and appealing. And, and since you have realistic proportions, it can be even a little bit more difficult for you. Um, but actually that, that varies from artist to artist. It could be easier. Some artists struggle with stylized, some artists struggle with realistic, so. But yeah, no, it's looking, it's looking fantastic though, dude. I'm, I'm super pumped to see. Right, 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 okay, I'll go that route then. Yeah, yeah, hell yeah. Yeah, feel free to rotate the arms downward as well for that pose, you know? Yeah, yeah. All right, Maria, let's see what you got. Thank you for sharing, Benny. Here. Oh, shit. Hell yeah. I like this. I like this. Hopefully, you can help me because I'm really frustrated with the landing. Oh, yeah. I, I feel like you're like 90% there. I think you're ninety percent there. Because I, I showed this yesterday to some of my classmates, and they all told me that um, the landing was not believable. So I'm really level with it. It's oh. like they don't believe like the landing part. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So that's I'm struggling with that. Yeah. Do you have reference for this? Yes. Yeah. Let's see it. Let's see that reference. Can I upload it? Yeah. Go for it. I'll get some Che in there as well. Hell yeah. But yeah, it depends on what how the reference is kind of doing it, you know. So we'll, we'll, we'll have to look at that. Let's see. I uploaded the reference to the Discord. Nice, nice. Let's see it. Ah, okay. Yeah, so it, it's it's more of a uh, of a tensed up sort of landing, and and he does he, he does that little hop, right there. Yeah, okay. Doom. All right. Let's look at our. Let's look at this. Oops. So notice our line of action differences here. Look at how extended out this guy's is because he's catching all of his forward momentum there. And then ours is more straight up and down right there. So first of all, I, I would uh, 
yeah, I suppose this is the landing frame right there. Uh, this one would be more direct with the 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 arc of the hips or, or the arc of the character. So if we just track our arc visually, right here. Do do do. Also, you have like a if you if you look at the the character, they have like if you look at their hips, they kind of jut out right here. And so let me just do 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 do. do. Do, do, do. So see see the 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 line that it takes right there. You're just going to need to clean up the those two axes right there. And instead, get a nice flowing motion with the character. This pose right here. I like how extended the feet are. Definitely definitely need needs to happen like that. Um, but have have this have this pose in here more. This pose is very important because it shows these feet are contacting on the on the balls of the toes cuz and they're tensed up and his arms are up high so that's going to sell it's it's like that the the squirrel tail I'm going to be talking about that a lot cuz if you just simplify these these characters down to uh, down to a squirrel down to that squirrel you should be should be good so so in animation we can yeah bring Bring these a little bit out. The, the character hops forward. So to sell that hop forward, if we if we have the the arc more lateral and diagonal here, and have these feet land a little bit further out, like the references, then we'll get some good results there. So get this, and then this this whole torso. We can clean that line of action up a little bit. Get it twisted back here and don't be afraid to, to pump these arms up even higher in the air. Um, and then do 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 right there. Right there we could uh, maybe mess with this back uh, hand to get not as much twinning and then have this Let's see what the reference. Yeah, so the head forward a little bit, kind of looking where to where to catch themselves. Little bang. So the head already kind of here. There we go. So that's that's going to give you a lot more power going into that landing, right there, right. And again, you can also just maybe maybe change this up a little bit to, to reduce the twinning in there. But um, but yeah, so that'll give you a lot more power landing, and it will also sell the it reason for um, for this little like forward hop, which I like. I like the forward hop. Let's look at the reference again. Unfortunately, this reference doesn't have the in-betweens, but uh, it's also kind of cool because you'll you'll learn a lot. Um, you might have to do, do, do oh my god, where am I? All my tabs. Dun, dun, dun. You might have too many frames of, of land right here. You might have like a, a one too many. So you might maybe maybe lose one of these frames in here and get back to get down to this little like squatted pose a little bit earlier. Try getting here earlier. There we go. Boom. And this guy kind of springs out, so you might want to have your your arc be um like this is from the last pose and then kind of bounce into that next that next forward pose right where 
they're like ready, they're like posted up. So bounce, try try bounce. into forward pose. You don't have to go as high as I did right here. You can keep it nice and nice and just barely go over the positive Y position of this end pose right here. Um, but yeah, so. I think, I think that'll give you a lot more power. That'll show you where your forces are coming from. And I think that'll, that'll sell it. Well, like I said, you're, you're basically like 90% there. I think you just clean up a few arcs, clean up a few poses. Uh, if you want to add even more, uh, more power to this, you could delete one of these keys out of here. So you could like delete this uh, frame 37 and just go straight into frame like 39. Like as you just go from 36 to 39, boom. And then that, that'll, that'll really make it snappy. Like if you, if you watch any sort of fighting movie, um, a lot of the times when, when an actor throws a punch, they'll physically go in on the editing process and cut out two frames towards the end of that punch to make it go faster. Like that, that they do it in real life on movies. So let's do it in film, uh, let's do it in our animation as well. And I think that's how you can sell a lot of power. But like, but overall, it's looking great though. Like, I'm I'm liking a lot of this. I'm liking a lot of this. Yeah, it's sick. Yeah, really, really solid work. Really solid work. But yeah, do do. If you. If you are on this up as well, like in here, uh, see, see how we go from this straight pose right here. Down here, we could like on, on the up, you can kind of sell the overlap of the spine by getting a little bit, a little bit more lower leaning, right? A little bit lower. So if you, if you get this going in there, get a little bit more of a scrunch in there. Keep basically everything where it is, but just with a little bit more scrunch, that's gonna sell like that that person, they like jump straight up and then they landed right there, right? And if you just think about that spine is kind of an overlap, you know? So if, if you go in here, you go straight up, land, Boom, and then overlap into, into that settle, you know? Um, so yeah, just think of it as slightly limp. So land, boom, curl, and then up. So I think, I think, that'll, I think that'll also help. And then you, you, can, you can end up in the, in the same pose if you'd like. But yeah, looking good so far, looking good. Looking delicious. You, you can try to eliminate some of the twinning as well. Um, by like, like if, if you like look at like Spider-Man poses a lot, like I know this class talks a lot about Spider-Man, but that's because he's like fucking a boss for, for animation. Um, even though the reference doesn't do it, you can like kind of bust out one of these legs a little bit sooner and get into like a cool pose to make them look more ninja-like, you know, and have like this leg kind of pointing down as well. I know it's not what the reference did, but you can always push your posing, always push your posing, especially when we're, we're learning like this. Like you can, you all need to, to, to definitely experiment with like what works and how far you can pull these characters. Um, because you can, you can get a lot of dynamicism out of here. When I, I started making a lot of animation gains when I realized how much better my posing could be and yeah, I, I went way too far with it in, in the other direction, but you can definitely do stuff like this and get and get some really cool results, you know. But yeah, so that's it. That's it for the for this this little land. But yeah, this, this is looking fantastic, dude. Thank I'm, you. I was really frustrated and I wanted to cry. <laughs> yeah, well, dude, if you're ever feeling like that, like 
always feel free to like send me a video on discord and um yeah i can always look at it too but yeah you shouldn't be frustrated you're you're doing amazing like this is looking great it's looking fantastic dude keep it up keep it up all right so next on the list grecia oh hell yeah dude this is sick this is fucking badass dude yeah hell yeah good stuff good stuff yeah just just keep working on it like i i like the the i like the proportions that you have in here too um i'd say you might be good to um do a uh oh, i hope i think these eyelashes are separate sub tools which would be very helpful for you in the future um i think they are yeah it looks like they are um but yeah, I think you're you, at this point, you're good to do a Z remesh and then uh, do it like, cause, cause right now this is just clearly dynameshed in here. Nothing is following the form. So if you do a Z remesh, you're gonna get some nice sculptable topology. Do a Z remesh, same. So in here, um, it'd be Z remesh, same. And it's going to give you some really good topology. And then you can click divide once to go up in uh, in subdivision levels, right? To get a little bit more detailed. Because you're working low right now, which is fantastic. You're doing exactly as I said. Um, but I think you've refined this up to a point where, like, you can start getting a little bit more detailed in there, you know? So, so feel free to do that. And uh, feel free to, to establish this curl a little bit more. I would just go in with, a, with, with damn standard and uh, like a little bit of a bigger brush size and kind of just carve that in there. Use your, use your smooth, alternate smooth on the outsides of it to, to really define that. But yeah, looking fantastic, looking fantastic. Uh, hands are looking good too, hands are looking good too. If these get a little bit, like it, it looks like the, the, the middle finger might be a little bit skinnier than others. So if you, if you run into that problem, you can use an amazing brush. Um, shit, I wish I could like recreate that issue. Let's see. Let's see if I can do it easily. Mm. Hmm. Not so much, but basically, um, I'll just do it on the hair because it's also a common place to, to get that issue. Oh my God. Here we go. So sometimes on like hair and stuff, if you're if you're smoothing it, it gets a little bit too crumpled, right? It gets too skinny and crumpled in on itself. What you can use is inflate the inflate brush. And that is right here. Uh, it's called I N F L A T. No e at the end of it, so don't look for that. But in flat. And when you do this, see how it kind of adds form back to it. So, so feel free to use that brush on those fingers if they get too skinny in, in certain parts. It could be, it could be a godsend. So yeah, give that a go. Um, let's look at more stuff on it. I, I love the overall proportions of everything. I think basically, yeah, I, I think for the body, I think you're good to go in and start putting some clothes in there. I think for the face, yeah, you can Z remesh and then go up in one subdivision level and start doing some more detailing there. Uh, but yeah, uh, but you are gonna. I, I would say don't spend much more time on this. I, I hope the. I hope your planned out. I hope your planned outfit for this character isn't too extreme. Um, simply because we only have five weeks left. So retopology. You're going to save a lot of time on other people because you don't have um, you don't have crazy complex hair. Um, some people have like a lot of extra strands and stuff in there, um, but yeah, I, I think you're you obviously have like the the, the skill for this stuff. Like this is looking really good. Like I'm I'm loving the proportions you have. Uh, I love how the face is is looking in here, um, but yeah, just keep it up keep it up 
Yeah, no problem. No problem. And Diana's got some topology. Nice. Good stuff. Good stuff. Um, doo -doo 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 -doo. So usually on the nose, these this this little curve under wraps around the top of it somehow. So you might want to go in and try to redivert that. But honestly, since we're not animating these, it doesn't matter as much. Um, but I, I I like that you're I can see how you're you're laying these out and sort of getting getting those different areas retopologized. It's 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 coming along really nicely. Come along really nicely. Let's see the hands. Hands. Hands are looking a little, a little bit strange uh, because usually we don't terminate things like this right at the knuckle. Usually the, the knuckle is instead sort of an, uh, an extrusion or an inset rather because you, you, you'd extrude those and then pull them in a little bit um, during the modeling process. So if you're uh, retopologizing it, you can uh, kind of mirror that geometry, but it honestly seems like you have a lot of it represented already. So maybe maybe just keep that in for future reference or, or future ideas. Um, the smile was giving me trouble. Let's see. Do do. Um, I mean, it looks pretty good though. It looks pretty good. I, I don't, I, I, I think if anything, some of your jawline is getting a little bit lost in here. I can see that like the, the high poly is sticking through this low poly in here. So, so yeah, get, give, give that some, some attention there, but the, the smile looks, looks like it's pretty good. Also, um, again, for future reference, um, that edge loop, this one right here, um, it, it, uh, it, it doesn't usually jut out this far. It usually kind of hugs the surface and makes a more uh, egg-like shape almost on the face. Uh, but honestly, this, this, is still, this is still good. This is still looking good. Um, you could use it with, you could go for a little bit of relax with uh, holding shift and going over some of these edge loops. Um, but yeah, other than that, it's, it's looking really good. Keep it up. I know you, you have a lot to, to retopologize. So um, yeah, just just get, it, get ahead on that gang. Let's see. This is the character, right? Yeah. To do. So what else is going to give you problems? Honestly, the, not much else. The, the face and the hair will be the hardest part to retopo, as well as the hands. And you've, you, you've already done, started going after that. For the hair, I would say you could Z remesh half a lot of these strands in here. You can Z remesh half a lot of those strands. Um, simply because they're tubes. And ZBrush does a pretty decent job with like tube shapes, you know? Um, but yeah, as the, this hair base, you might have to retopo this yourself. Um, maybe not this like singular strand right here. That could be a different object. But yeah, and then. All these, all these in here. Um, hmm. Hmm. Some of those can be a pretty annoying too. I just re top out a character that had a bunch of those. Um, but uh, but yeah, I, I think I think by hand would be best for this ponytail part. That's probably gonna be the hardest part of the model to re top out. Uh, but you basically, it, it's, if you just think about it, like a, a cylinder kind of shrink wrapped around this, it's pretty much that, you know, um, you just have to give yourself some spans in order to get like the, the little jutting out hairs in there. But, but yeah, it's looking, looking phenomenal still. I'm liking it. I'm very excited. Good stuff, Diana. All right, Ray. We didn't do Ray yet. Oh wait, yeah, I looked at Ray's at the before the start of class. Aha. Yeah, look at uh, look at how much cleaner this start of the walk is. Like, hell yeah, Ray. Good shit, Ray. Wow, there we go. Ray has been having some issues with the rig itself. So, but, oh yeah, dude, right, hell yeah, hell yeah, right. 
yeah ray you're you're basically ready to move on to the to the next part again don't use that picker that came with it i think it was uh having you select some things that uh i think it was having you select some things that just shouldn't be keyed um unfortunately like that's where that foot that foot movement right here is coming from it's not like in the animation itself but yeah good stuff good stuff all right all righty hell yeah we were at Benny's Nan Che. Uh, I do have a question though. When I extract in Maya, the mesh turns into a white and gray mess. Um, oh yeah, that's the normals. That's the normals. Uh, they it does that. It's it's most it's just visual. Like you're talking about like the high poly, right, Diana? Yeah, that's visual. Um, what you can do to reset that, I wonder if I can like recreate that with just, no, nah, probably not. But basically, your normals are getting all messed up. And in order to, to fix that up again, you can go to mesh display um, and then set to face and it's going to make it look all uh, faceted like this. You can go back into mesh display, soften edge, but and then and then it'll look correct. But it is just visual, but it also is annoying. But if you try to do that on like a hundred thousand try triangle character, like it, it's gonna be pretty annoying. Um it's gonna end slow, so just, just keep that in mind. Uh, but yeah. Huh. All right. So last in line, we have Che, fight. Um, man, you got Che and Spider-Man in a live meeting. Sounds like a live meeting I'd like to join. Let's see. Yeah. Yep, yep, yep. Yeah, cool, cool stuff. Oh, I like this. I like this end camera right there. That's pretty cool. Um, do, 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 do. Oh, I can see the sword is gimbling out in your hand. Uh, guys, this is what I'm talking about when I, ever I say gimbal out. See how this sword is like straight in the hand and then it rotates all crazily. Oh, it's actually, it might be just the hand doing that itself. Yeah. So the hand is gimbling out in there. Um, the way you fix that is by running an Euler filter on it. Uh, it is, you can find that in, sorry, I'm trying not to sneeze. Only dying a little bit on the inside. Oh my God. All right, crisis averted. So in, uh, in your windows, animation editor, graph editor, you basically select the control that is doing that crazy rotation. Um, like if you ever key something and it's and it starts rotating really funky, like it kind of does like a weird little corkscrew or it does like a complete flip out like we have right here. Just select the control that's doing that and then go to your graph editor and then go to curves and Euler filter, boom. And then uh, it, it'll, it'll scan through and it'll fix all those for you. If that doesn't fix it, control Z, and go to um, curves, change rotation interpolation, and then do quaternion cubic um, or quaternion slurp. Well, one, of, one of those will probably look uh, like what you're trying to, to key, uh, and it will resample your curves and make it look nice. Um, but yeah, let's, let's look back at this. Did you just do the Euler filter chain? <laughs> and did it did it work? Nah. Oh, did it mess it up more? No. Yeah. 
Interesting. So let's look back again. So yeah, uh, Che knows this, but tire comes to a complete stop here. You just have a little bit of subtle like overshoot and uh, and settle in there, um, just to get some, a little bit of ambient movement in there. A uh, character in the back, back could be breathing as well. You just do like a breathing anim, kind of ready for the battle. You know, and that's mostly on that's mostly on the the spine controls. You can just twist those up a little bit. You can also lift up the um, the clavicle, and but keep the arms pointed down. And that's how you can kind of like just cheat a breathe. I, I, I had a lecture on that one, um, I think like two weeks back is when I did that, maybe three weeks. So you, yeah, y'all y'all can feel free to check that out. Yeah, I think I need to work on more details. Super fast because I'm delayed. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. That's. I mean, it's 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 good that you 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 kind of shorten the scene now because this is a lot more doable. It's a lot more doable. Oh yeah, I wanted to change the layout again and again, but I think I should stop changing it now. Yeah, I, I think it's in a good spot. I think it's in a good spot. This this pose. It's not as strong as it could be. That we, we might be able to play with this a few different ways. Um, Cause I, I kind of want to see this arm out here. And then see the blade behind the character, maybe in this sort of tangent right there. Cause right now it's like really close. I want to see like, oh, like something like that. So you could do that like out to the side and have the face still looking over this, you know, face still in the same spot. Or do, do let's go one frame forward. You could even go in, maybe pull the camera a little bit back and then have the like this this big sort of uh like arms over the over the shoulders you, you wouldn't need to or uh arms over the head and then head poking out here mouth open yeah you know like that sort of that sort of pose eyes heads all in the same place and then sword back here just to sell that power a little bit more Interesting. There we go. Boom. So again, I, I'd want I like if you if you stack up all of your stuff on the silhouette, it doesn't look as strong. So instead, for these hits, try to get try to get limbs to be breaking the silhouette here like push these hands forward and then meet the blade maybe maybe the tiger guy could be swinging a little bit slightly higher you know and get this contact right there um so yeah if you, the, the more that you can kind of break the silhouette and have it not stacking as much as this the better uh maybe rotate this little the, the pull vector for this IK control right here, a little bit out so you get more of a bent leg in here to, to kind of show that power. Because all every time that you bend and kind of scrunch up a leg, it's it's basically building power, right? You know, so if you can if you can kind of bend this out, kind of flatten that 
that pose into more of a two-dimensional size right here for this. I do realize that you've probably been changing the layout a bunch, so something that looks good from one angle might not look from, as good from this angle. Um, So this, so boom, clang. And then spin move into this, okay. Boom, okay. So in here, you're always gonna have like it, it, with a with a sword this big, you need to kind of uh, have it overlapping with the character, right? So like it the, the character is going to like lead it and then it's going to follow. So this this right here, as as this spins, you're gonna have this arm kind of wrapping across and then holding it like this, and that sword is still over here in this pose. And that's gonna, having it all the way back here as well is going to sell the power behind this next hit. Boom, and then, so the, the sword needs to be like lower in frame here. It could even be, it, it could be off screen and we just we see the hilt coming towards the screen but we know where it is and then boom bang that so if it's down there when it gets up to here and makes contact with with the the sword boom that's going to really sell the power in there so if you get this sort of attack in there um, lion, so he sweeps past. Duh. Okay. So I, I think just to occupy that time. Let's see, boom, sweeps. Bring you can bring his you can kind of like make him more lumbering and have that sword kind of over here, like low to the ground. It should naturally be that low, anyways, because it's a pretty heavy object, right? So you can have him be more lumbering. Look, I, I like I like him kind of looking off to the side. It'd be cool to have a distinct note where he he's still lumbering down like this way, you know, like he like he's He's got that heavy armor and stuff, heavy sword lumbering off here. It'd be cool to have him, I, I like this pose again, but it'd be cool to have a, a, a note where he looks back at our at our character and notices that they're coming in for a swing. And that's what that's what drives him to sort of um to sort of act, go back into uh combat here. And then try to get this to not contact from the, the, the back because it looks like this the, his sword has like a very um, like he wants to hit it with that sharp edge right so so try to have the the contact be clearly like the sharp end is going towards character so it, he just basically flip his wrist at this part boom um, and you could try to bring his arm further over here, like his hand, so you get more of this in here. So we get a nice, real strong, like arm going towards the camera pose right there. And then, and then extend into this, this like sort of pose right here. 
um, it might help to work with IK on the, the arm that's holding this sword because FK, every time that you move it, it's going to make it feel a little bit less weighty. It's going to, it's going to feel like it's weightless simply because like that rotation doesn't like get, it doesn't drag that sword around at all. So just make sure it, it stays stagnant. I do like him using his claw in this. So I like that. So sorry, my computer's lagging. No. Yeah, I like, I like the claw in there. Very cool, very cool. I like this. I would almost want a little bit more uh, I'd want to see during it at this shot like a little bit of the the lion jumping up like he could be in his anticipation pose here and then like like head like really low and then arm up or our arm low and then um, go into that and jump high. Like he could be already like kind of on the way up, you know? So like, so it can kind of show where he's coming from. Cause it almost feels like he warps unless you sell that with sound, like in the, in the end product, you know, of him running up. But even then I, I feel like it is like, he's warping. I like the, I like the, the pose arm, arm over here. You could maybe even like bring it even further over and see. Can you break that silhouette more? Whoa, I am doing crazy stuff right now. There we go. Um, boom. There. Like if you could bring that even further over, really sell that pose leg maybe a little bit higher in the air but yeah like like the head kind of pointing that way and then like the the rotation across into that that hand what you want is a pose with that arm really up high i realize the rig might not accommodate that but like right now you you you're kind of keeping that like 90 degree throughout you need a, an extended arm in here somewhere so if you get, if you could get like a a pose like this and into the hand holding the sword up here sort of be off frame a little bit up high so if you could get a pose with that arm up really higher over there That'd be sick. Um, it's gonna really sell when you bring it down, you know. I like, I like changing the camera over here and then having the character duck under. Um, It'd be cool, yeah. It, you might need like a, a couple of more frames in here. So slash slash. Yeah. Hmm. Okay. Um. Yeah, we'll see. We'll see towards the end. But but yeah, like yeah. And then this, I, I like I like this getting into this final pose too. That's sick. Yeah. Good stuff. Good stuff. Yeah, just a little bit, a little bit more polish in the beginning, and then some. Uh, yeah, changing up of, of uh, posing. Just, just focus on posing a lot. I feel like, just try to try to get dynamic. Like, look up. I, I'm not kidding when I'm talking about like Spider Man and stuff. Like that, that show. Like Spider Man is amazing to look at because it just shows how far you can push your posing, um, in like a, just a two D image. And now that your layout is like pretty finalized, you can really polish your your posing to camera. So I think I think I think these coming weeks are going to be really awesome in terms of like where you, where you bring this scene um but yeah awesome stuff awesome stuff
Thank you, Mike. Also, yeah. if the Tiger Rig doesn't have an IK controller, then is there any way I can change it? Ooh, no IK arm? Yeah. Does he have IK feet, though? He has IK feet, right? Yeah, the fit has, but I think uh, it doesn't have it. For no, the for the arm. Uh, OK. Um, no, not really, unfortunately. You might be able to make your own, but it sounds, it sounds spooky and potentially dangerous. <laughs> <laughs> so um, yeah, I'd say just make, make do with it then. Um, it's just basically j just think of that, about how heavy that sword probably is. I know he's super big, you know, but it, it's still going to have that weight. So, so every time that, every time that he kind of shifts around, just make sure that it, it kind of overlaps. So instead of just like the body rotating like this one-to-one -one, kind of add a little bit of, a little bit of overlap on it. Right. So like as, as he's bringing that around just overlap it. Also don't, don't keep it super high in the air all the time. Cause that, that would take a lot of like muscle strength, you know, it'd be, it'd be like me trying to like carry this guitar, like, like this all the way through a scene, you know, like I, I naturally want to keep it lower, you know, simply because it's like so heavy. Right. So mm -hmm. keep that in mind, yeah. but yeah, you, you should be able to animate it still. It'll just be, it'll just be more difficult. Um, but yeah, send send me that tiger rig too. Send send me that bad boy. Maybe I can okay. see if something else is going on there. See if we can help you out there somehow. But yeah, good stuff. Good Thank stuff. You, Mike. Yeah, no problem. Um, and that is it. That is it. The do, 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 do. all right. Oh yeah. Okay. So let's go on break. Let's get back. Let's get back in here at 650. Um, I'll talk about um, animation layers. I'll also help Sammy out polish some like pelvis movement in here uh, uh, in her scene. Um, and that'll be cool. Um, but yeah, if you if you guys are like curious on how I would fix anything, send that over to me. Um, ask me retopology questions as well. Um, but yeah, so definitely uh, yeah, get on that. So I'll be I'll be back here at six fifty. So get some foods, get some drinks, and get ready for the rest of the class. Zoom recording, hell yeah. Screen two, share, all right. So we're recording, we're on screen two. Okay, so this looks, oops, Alt Z, wow, I think I just messed up the actual camera. Yeah, there we go. Or wait, no, no, that was the one, that, that was the correct one, okay. Okay. So let's see, we we're talking about pelvis stuff. Ah, yeah. So right here, it warps frame 92, 93, and it kind of twists a little bit. Um, I don't know if the reference twists right here. So if it does, maybe we go, we, we kind of rotate the pelvis throughout that to get that pose. But um, yeah, that would just depend on the on the reference. Now let's let's just check out the, the old graph editor for that. So let's click on the pelvis control. And let's see what's see what we got going. So that's gonna be translate, right? Because it kind of snaps fast in space. Like it just moves really quick right there. So I can see, I can see that it already takes like a sharp move right there. This looks like the sort of sharp move that is uh, hiding some sort of, um, like you're probably moving the main control under the character or away from the character, one of those further in. So probably don't worry about this one. Um, but yeah, let's look at this one. 
So let's get let's get closer in here. Oh shit. Oh shit, Sammy. Sammy. What did I do? Did I break it? No, I think you were animating in hard mode. Uh, your entire time with this because I see it you're not using um you're using linear tangents. You see this? See how hard these are Oh. Are like like see how there's no interpolation there? It's just straight into that second one. Ew. But if I switch this, boom. That ooh, look at that little that little curvy boy, you know? So let's let's first shit. Let's uh let's let's make all of these the uh let's make all of these auto tangents. See if that makes anything cool. It could, yeah, these are all, yeah, these are all linear. You see that? So um, basically what you do is, I'm gonna go before all that end stuff. I'll just do the, the more polished stuff. So you just, this is auto right here. Sometimes spline can look better, which is uh, this one right here. But yeah, yours are, are, are currently on this mode right here, linear. So if we go to auto, It's going to think for a while because it has a lot of tangents to mess around with. Mm -hmm. It's going to be thinking for ages, apparently. But uh, you'll you'll notice it on the graph editor once it once it happens. Oh no, I can hear my computer just thinking so hard. <laughs> Maybe this was a mistake. Oh God. Big brain time. <laughs> Big computer brain time, at least. I think mine did it, maybe. I don't know. I pushed the button and it, they look- They look squiggly rather than sharp. Yeah. They yeah. They look squigglier. Yeah, that's-, that's that's more how it's supposed to look. Oh, I, okay. I just didn't put that in together in my brain. I don't know why. What? I just decided to make every, cause I would go in like, cause it would get all weird. So I'd go and make all of the tangents lines so that it wouldn't be wonky, but then I just wonky mm. myself. You just wonky yourself. Yeah. So I did. I played myself. <laughs> I Damn. Played. Damn, this is going incredibly slow for this. This is yeah, Maya. What is happening? Maya, please. Maya. Oh my god, there we go. All right, so it worked. There we go. So now they're all squiggles. And uh yeah, so basically that's what what like this is how you get nice clean arcs is with this sort of stuff, you know, with, with these curves. Because if it's sharp, then it's not gonna it's gonna move sharply in, in your scene, you know. Yeah. But uh, that's probably not gonna fix this because I think there is just a key that's in like the, the wrong spot. It does look it does look pretty pretty nice though. I, I think that did improve the the scene a good amount. So let's see there. And then so this so pelvis moves way too fast here. Whoa. It just goes from this pose and then two frames later, boom, already right there. So what we need to do is delete the second key. Simple, boom, delete, pop. And nope, maybe not that one. Maybe the, maybe the next one then, or the previous. There. So our, our, our legs hyperextending now, but we're not getting that insane acceleration, right? 
we're not getting that insane acceleration. So we can come back in and fix this stuff. I'm gonna make your environment on a layer. Wait, it might be already. Let's see. No, it doesn't look good. Aha. There we go. So now this leg's hyperextending because I changed that key. So let's fix that. I'm gonna turn on auto tangents or, or auto key. So we're just fixing this hyperextension. For all this. And weird. So let's get some weird stuff. Wow. That was definitely not intentional. I don't know what's going on. I think it's there's like a control I was messing with that points the foot super hard. Oh okay. Uh, but that ended up kind of ruining my day. So I Changed it on most of she's the just, poses. She's, she's just dancing. Yeah, she's just dancing. You know, if dancing. her legs break, just, that's the way that it's gonna be. Y'all making fun of her. She's just trying to bust a move. You know, she's better than me, so I'll give her that. She's, she's, <laughs> yeah, she looks she's dancing. She's on a building as one does. So now this pelvis, it looks like it's accelerating a little bit too hard. Let's look at our world. Axis probably an X if I had to guess. Let's see. Let's check this. Yeah. Okay. So you see what I'm talking about? So up and then it kind of lunges oh, yeah, forward ew. a little bit. So, I don't know who did that. Gross. <laughs> Certainly nasty. not. I would never do that. So we can we can usually simplify these curves. It'll probably be a little bit of translate Z as well. Um, we can usually simplify these curves and delete extra keys in here that we don't really need and just make this nice and smooth. So let's see there, might not happen still. Oh yeah, yeah, let's get a different angle so we can really see what's going on during this. I'm just gonna look from the top. Ah, so it is actually Z axis there, okay. So, So let's just give that a little bit of Z. Translate the start. And let's fix that rotation. Oh, the rotation is in um, pointy boy still. Let's turn that to auto tangents. Man, why does it take my computer so long to change this to auto? I got a lot of stuff going on in this thing. <laughs> She's doing a, the most. Yeah, but usually I like it just does it so fast. I don't know. It's a, some some. I don't know. It's probably that I'm recording and shit. It's probably all that stuff. So, so here we go. So that's that's looking. A little bit more clean. I feel like I just need a little bit more time in here on this one. Okay. So I also want to. So this, this is when the rotate happens. I kind of want the rotate to happen a little bit earlier, right? So to kind of lead into that lunge forward. So let's go in. And I can see just based on the difference here, like this is this is that rotate that I'm looking at that feels a bit strange. So if I just click on on these first keys and delete them, boom, it's going to start that that rotate a little bit earlier. But it looks like it's kind of going to kind of throw off our our animation a little bit. So let's not do that. Let's instead, 
just rotate it in our viewport. There we go. There we go, so it's a little bit more clean. Um, and then I get a lot of sort of FK feel on this area in here where like this this hip is moving all all over the place and the body just kind of isn't reacting to that at all. Um, Sammy, could I see the reference for this particular spot? Yeah, let me... Was that in... I, I definitely saw the reference for this dance earlier. Yeah, I have it is in, it in Sync my... Sketch somewhere. I might have sent it to you before. Yeah, I, I definitely saw it on Sync Sketch. You think I could just pull it up from one of your past links in here? It's possible. I could just also send another one if that's easier. Um, might be easier. Let's see. I'm just going to open up your last link. Oh, no, it's not in there. Let's go even earlier. Do, 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 do. Six sketch. I just sent it if you want to just go to the bottom. All right. I, I, I just found it at that, oh. same, that same moment. Word. Let's see. So. It's the uh, second one, I think. Um. Which one? Uh, oh, there's only one. Never mind. I have a different one that's got two versions in it. Uh, okay. I think that's that is looks it? right to me because I have one that's in 24 frames per second, and then the other one's the original one. Oh, okay. So basically, what I'm seeing is that that upper body stays pretty straight up. Yeah. During this, in the the hips. kind of bend a little bit like this, a little bit like this, and then upper body, very straight, very proper. Do, do, do. Then pelvis is kind of at this sort of angle. So let's see if we can get that in here. So I feel like it's, it's, it, it's feeling pretty good here. We could probably clean up the pose for sure um, to make it more appealing to camera, you know? Yeah. Things are kind of like on top of each other. But right here, it kind of falls off. It like leans a bit too far forward, right? In, in On blue, like it leans forward and then into that next pose right yeah. here. So this is like a little bit too far forward, maybe. Um, but you do need to clear this. So let's see. Man, dances are wild. Let me tell you. What's going on in here? Oh yeah. So yeah, let's, I wonder, I wonder if I can just cheat this. Aha. So I'm just basically visually matching the sort of posture of that other one. There we go. It kind of looks better. Let's see. Ooh, it's a little bit sudden though. Definitely a bit sudden. So where is it sudden though? On which axis? Yeah, definitely too sudden on, on X and Z here. Um, do you have do you have reference for one of these? This little drop and then go into the other leg in here i think that should be in the in the, the one yeah the only part that's different is like oh the very end where i took out all those turns hell yeah god damn i can't believe a person actually can do this it yeah i 
I don't get it. I don't know where their toes go, to be honest. Right. So pelvis goes forward and then, oh my God, that's such a weird movement. Yeah, PK arabesque, it's very dumb, but it looks fancy. It looks so sick though, yeah. PK arabesque. Mm -hmm. PK is where you put uh, all your weight on a straight leg and then arabesque is just whenever your leg goes up, I think behind you. Oh, wow. PK arabesque. Yep. It's just a bunch of French words. <laughs> dances. That's all it is. I have an, I have an answer. My girlfriend oh. is a ballet. Well, what's a ballet dancer? And said that the shoes, the point shoes, they're built with like a, a wooden block in them. Oh. It's a, oh, hang on. She oh, wants, please. I need, I need the info. I'm very curious. If your feet are like built correctly, like some people can't it's called like not being able to get over the box so people who whose feet aren't made for ballet their feet are going to be destroyed because they're constantly like um what's the word i don't know <laughs> adjusting basically mm -hmm. you're making up for the insufficiency i guess but um if your feet are made so you can point directly down from your leg like i'm showing benny right now my toes are directly under my leg right yeah i can even put them past directly under my leg oh my god then you're standing right on it and then the shoes themselves are made with, um, usually it's like a wood, cardboard, and paper mache like mix that's like really pressed together. Mm -hmm. That's what's under your arch right here. Okay. So it Word. breaks right here. That's where you break it in. And then from there on, it's supporting you like this. So you're still standing on your heel, but your foot's all fucked up. Your foot's all fucked up. So if you don't have a good point, you can't, you can't do it, basically. No, she's saying if you don't have a good point, you can't do it, basically. Okay, that's me. Definitely can't do that. Yeah, yeah. That's how you're gonna ruin your feet, she says. You can still do it, but it's no, I'm I'm a I'm a modern I don't do real oh, she ballet. She can't hear you. She can't hear you. It's just my headset, unless you can hear her. No. Can you say it again? Um, I said that I'm a modern dancer. I don't do I don't do point or anything. Oh yeah. I did point for a bunch of years and then I actually sold point shoes too. Oh word. Oh wow. Yeah. I love that. This is like a whole different world for me, but I figured all of the movements are much more complicated, so it would be fun to make on this thing. Oh, yeah, oh, that's thing. cool. Jeez. So, like, you got the foot foot position right when she's pointing it. Yeah, I thought it was a little bit dramatic, but, it, I mean, that's accurate. You should, if you want to look up, like, how to kind of make the lines look right and, like, the balances right, mm -hmm. you should look up, like, famous ballerinas yeah you're right uh, like Tamara Rojo or some like not just ballet because those won't yeah be great you yeah. should look up like the big name stars I only know I think Misty Copeland is that her name yeah that's it that's my knowledge of ballet dancers oh yeah hers might be kind of hard to tell because she has like really really like strong lines I want to mm -hmm. say you might want to look up like um like Sylvie Guillaume is her name. I think that's how you say it. Um, or Tamara Rojo or someone like that. Okay, for sure. I can't think of any names right now. That's I mean, okay. Well, it's very there, helpful. There we Thank go. You. There was a cameo by my girlfriend. Thank by, you for that. Uh, yeah. By an actual... An actual dancer an actual person. Dancer. Yeah. Right. What are the an odds? actual trained dancer person. We, I'm trained there. in fake dance. Fake, it's, fake not, dance. it's not fake yeah. dance sammy it, i mean i'm a flag twirler i do i like, can't twirl a flag uh, most people can't it's i can barely twirl a pencil on a tablet oh i can't, I can't do that i cannot no that's a whole different thing i was very close to doing a flag twirling animation but i did not want to like deal with a prop again understandable that's fair and it would have been like maybe three seconds, if that. I mean, I don't hear Mike saying you couldn't have done that. You know, I might <laughs> still do it. I, 
a, oh man i modeled a rifle already it exists yeah guess, it'd be sick i think you're right but, i agree but it would just be effort under, understand yeah understand that working with props is uh pain in turmoil it is in real life too yeah yeah <laughs> yeah imagining imagine not having full control on that and trying to do it like mm-mm, mm-mm. that's just that's, it's that's a lot what, of head injuries and crying up. but it's fun we love it hell yeah i get paid money to do it so i'm Tears gonna pretend fun. like i like it you gotta get that money <laughs> so, yeah. that money. so look at so what i noticed from this reference beep, bop, um is when she goes up watch her pelvis kind of goes in a little bit and then into that and then up again so what it actually what it's doing is kind of um it's not going to the side it never goes backwards in space but you see in our frame and our camera boom goes left the screen left in our space and then down and forward and then back again mm. And when you look at the graph editor, it's because you have these little little hiccups in here, right there. Gross. So if I delete those out, boom, right there. Nice, smooth tangents. We can even go a little bit further, delete this one. And let's see what this looks like now. See, so it still it still goes forward to support the weight, and then it just goes into that next pose, you know. So this one, is, so this is just basically how you how you fix these like these curves, right? Of all this of all this pelvis stuff. Mm-hmm. Now this is gonna look weird, yeah, because we we changed the tangents on this one. Um, so it's gonna be a little bit weird for now. However. So for this part, this is where we're going to change things, right? Yeah. Um, and let's give you a fighting chance of doing that. So do, 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 basically, you animate, you're, you're animating a pelvis, which is already hard to control the curves of. Then you're animating your main control. And then you're also animating your sub control of that main control. So you have like three things affecting this pelvis, which is making it really hard to get clean animation and clean arcs on this. So what I'm going to do is basically blast all that stuff out of there and uh, zero it out. Hopefully, um, hopefully red nine can help us out here. Um, so red nine animation toolkit. I'm going to track the pelvis with a locator. Um, so I'm just going to say pelv loc, boom, and then I'm going to duplicate it. I'm going to do left foot loc. I'm going to duplicate it, right foot loc. And then We can look at these in the outliner. Basically, I'm going to I'm going to track all of your controls, and then zero out all the animation on these main controls, and then animate only on the pelvis and like the legs and stuff. You know, that's my that's my methodology there. So left knee, look, okay. Right knee, look, there we go. All right. And then we can also simplify our timeline so it's not going to bake as much. And then let's just get tracking. Let's get tracking, bro. So driver is the pelvis, and driven is that pelvis locator. We're going to animation timeline, and then uh, what we're going to do, actually, I'm going to select all these locators and just give them one key. Just so they, sometimes you just need to key them first. So driver, then driven that pelvis locator, snap transforms. It's going to scan, boom, there we go. 
So now if we you select that pelvis locator, you can see that it has, it is completely following the pelvis on every single key. Perfect. Now we can do that with our other locators as well. So uh, left foot locator, uh, all right, so we select our left foot and then the left foot locator. You always do driver, then driven. And there you go. Perfect, perfect. And then click the right foot, right foot loc, snap transforms. And then left knee, left knee loc. Snap, snap transforms. And I'm only doing this because like right now we currently have a bunch of a bunch of controls that are pushing this character around. I'm trying to simplify that. I'm trying to make the only control that uh, moves the character is the waist and the limbs, you know. And uh, right knee, just this, yep. Right knee look there, snap transforms. And boom, there you go. So now all the locators are following everything. Um, let's make sure there's nothing else. No, the arms are an IK for here. Frick. All right, so I need to make a arm. So left arm loc and yeah, basically the same thing that I did with like the feet. Let's do left arm locator, right arm locator, left elbow locator, right elbow locator, and yeah, this might seem a little bit like madness, but uh, this is the animators track shit all the time. 100% of the time we, we have to do shit like this. So make sure that at least conceptually this, this makes sense to you. So I'm tracking basically every single limb and IK control with a locator because we need to zero out this bottom stuff and then retrack everything with it zeroed out. Um, because if I, if I simply just go in right here and tell these controls to stop moving, like right here, like if I just make this the last key and then delete everything else, boom. Sorry, why, for some reason this graph editor is so slow. It's insane, there you go. If I do that, the character now is moving like not in space, but you can see all my locators, this little squadron of locators that I have going are still, they, they're still maintaining that motion. That's why, I'm, that's why I'm tracking all of this, you know? It's not just for fun, you know? Um, Yes, okay, so let's undo. I don't know why my graph editor is going so slow though. It's really weird. There we go. We got that back. In fact, maybe, maybe I should close it and open it up again when I need it. So I'm going to save this as 20. Let's do tracked. So I'm just doing a lot of tracking in this. There we go. And where was I? So right arm or left arm look. Oh, I did the wrong one to the wrong one. All right, so left arm and left arm look, snap transforms. And then right arm and right arm look. Snap transforms. And then left elbow, 
left elbow loc. Loc is just locator. If you haven't, uh, if you're wondering why I'm muttering about locs a lot. And where's, is this the elbow? Oh my God, it is. <laughs> All right, so elbow and then right elbow locator, snap transforms. Aha, all right, so I think everything is tracked now. Um, if it's not, I will be very sad. There we go, save the scene. And so now we should be able to track everything back uh, as long as Red9 serves us well. Um, we can go in and delete these keys, right click, delete. Man, that is taking a long time. It's really, it should not be doing it, taking that long, which is really weird. And then, yeah, so. So now we have this locator in space and Take this pelvis. Boom, I'm going to set a key on that. We're going to get plagued with keys, but we can always simplify them. So I'm going to select that locator that this is that pelvis locator. And look how it, it's still going through space and maintaining exactly like the old motion of the character before I zeroed everything out. So let's go in and click that locator, boom, and then the control, boom. Because now the locator is gonna drive this pelvis. Then we just do snap transforms, aha. Oh no. It's taking forever. Oh, what is happening? No. No. Shit. Yeah, I don't know why this, I don't know why this scene is like chugging. Like remember when I said that like <laughs> changing the tangents doesn't usually take that long. Um, it definitely does not take this long. Okay, there we go. Now it's starting to track. Thank God. Wow, I wonder what is causing that. That is really strange. <sighs> Oh, you have a bunch of motion trails in the scene. Ah, that could be it. That could be it. I'm gonna delete all these motion trails. Oh, <laughs> there's a big batch of them. Wow. I thought I deleted them all. It doesn't surprise me that I didn't. That could be wow. what's causing it. Uh, Aha. Gross. Obnoxious. <laughs> Well, let's see if it worked as well. Okay, so now you can see the pelvis is going along with our old animation. And then now we need to do each different part. So let's do, let's do the left foot because the left foot scares me. So let's look for left foot locator. Oop, and then left foot. And then snap transforms. That was much faster. I think it was the motion trails. Yeah, okay, there we go, there we go. So that's working. That's our, that is our old animation. And we just do this for everything. So let's do left elbow locator and then the left elbow snap transforms let's do uh, right foot locator and then the right foot Oop. there snap transforms then left knee locator and the left knee control, snap that knee control to that old animation uh, 
that old tracked animation and left or right knee locator, right knee control, snap transforms. Then left arm locator and left arm and snap transforms. And then right arm locator and right arm snap transforms. Then left elbow locator, left elbow snap transforms. Right elbow locator and right elbow snap transforms. All right. Hopefully, hopefully, there we go. So now that now all of that animation is no longer uh, being influenced by that, those main controls, right? So now we can go into this uh, into this pelvis and go into Windows, Animation Editor, Graph Editor. And we can just clean this up. Mm, my God. So my biggest, my biggest gripe with this scene or with the, with this end of the scene was the arc, right? So now if I go to animation, I don't know if I have my hotkey set up for this, so I don't want to mess anything up. But let's go to uh, visualize, create editable motion trail. Aha. Boom, you can see you can see how jagged that that pelvis is, right? So immediately you can just start going in and can I just delete these straight up? Oop, yeah. Hell yeah, I can. Hell yeah, I can. You can't stop me. Ooh, these are jagged. All right, so let's go into the pelvis as well and fix this. So I bet we're not completely on uh, auto tangents in here. Let's go to auto. Ah. And since I do have that motion trail, it's probably taking a while to update that. There we go. All right. So now we can feel free to just start deleting this stuff. And really simplifying it. And this is the biggest goofed part right here. I'm just going to go into the actual keys for this part. Do, 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 do. So this, I'm just going to delete all of them. Oh, good. I think I'm scared. Only a little bit. Only a little bit. There we go. And then I can just clean up the rest of this, you know. So, boo boo, this area right here definitely needs a key somewhere around here. There we go. And there we go. And we can take these, and just kind of move them down because I wanted these to be a little bit more gradual. And again, not, not a clean arc there. So let's pop that out. You just delete this, you know? We don't, we don't need that. We don't need none of that. Let's go back into this. Now, our posing is going to be messed up, right? Because we haven't done the, we changed so much of the, the that main pelvis that, like, all of our arms are going to be messed up and stuff, you know? But that's fine. That's fine. Let me just go in and delete this one, too. 
no. But now at least we have a smoother jump, a smoother jump. We need to, we definitely need to adjust the timing. Like we, it, it accelerates here, like through specifically on the graph editor, since this jump is going in a, basically a straight line. We can go into our translate X, which is what that line is on, right? So if I, if I move this forward, oh, it's a little bit on Z as well. Yeah, a little bit on Z too. But these basically could be straight lines. So Z and X can be straight lines during this jump. Oh. And then You'll get some nice results then. But you'll also notice that we're a little bit off center. So let's let's just drag this key, boom, right there, make that straight. But yeah, and then the rest is just going to be going in and getting those, getting those keys to, or get, getting like the the legs to sort of follow that action. Um, we might need to dial in the timing a little bit more. Like I'm not convinced of how how this pelvis moves throughout translate X and Z in here, and you can see how wobbly it is. Right, it's very wobbly in there. I want this to be clean. I want it to be shining, a shining example of smoothness, you know? Wow, I don't, I also don't like how our motion has this pelvis going up over and then kind of low and then up again. I'd prefer this to be uh, kind of like a straight thing in here. So we might need to go into some of these tangents, kind of bring this up. Beep, 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 beep. Don't need any of this. Can't even see it. There we go. And let's see what translate Y is doing in here. There we go. What are these bad boys doing? There we go. Okay. Very nice, very nice. And this is when you can start like laying in those like key poses that I was, was kind of fiddling with. This should be back here. So it's not even touching the ground actually. Is this, are we touching the ground at all during this? Okay, we are, we are. But this will also make cleaning up like each foot plant very simple. Like this first one, see how it's immediately sliding around in there. What we can do is just boom, contacts the ground, copy that key. Leaves the ground right on, on this frame. So paste, boom. Then delete everything in between. And let's just make sure I'm going to copy and paste that again. And then between these, 
we can look at the tangents. The reason it's still moving around is because we're on a different tangent. We're on probably spline, if I had to guess. So let's go to auto, boom. So it's gonna flatten that out. And then let's also flatten out the rotate in there, boom. So solid, solid foot plan right there, you see that? So yeah, there's a there's a lot to clean up about that, but that's this is a, basically a good start. Um, a lot of it is just deleting keys in there. Don't be afraid to delete your keys. I know we spent a lot of time putting them in there, but uh, you know sometimes we got ba bad keys in there. Yeah, can't can't change that much, you know. But uh, but yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna let you clean up the rest. You can also adjust the timing a little bit on this. It, we, we, we spend a little bit too much time at the start right here, at the start of that jump. It should really be a little bit faster throughout the, throughout the, that start of the jump, like right around here. I, I feel like a little bit of like, like we're almost going through molasses a little bit. So, uh, but it, feel free to clean it up on your end. Um, I'm gonna send you this file with all that tracking and stuff in there. Um, so please work off of that. And also remember that I, I did change a lot of splines or I, I changed it to, to splines rather than uh, linear tangents. So check the earlier parts of the animation, make sure there's nothing that's like messed up. I also did delete out some of those, uh, some of those frames during like this area so make sure that that flows well and that there's no like hyper extensions on the legs but yeah so let me send you this file back boop, boop, boop. but yeah so just for everyone everyone else that's that's how we kind of clean up pelvises a lot of times just deleting keys just deleting keys kind of compensating for rotations always very scared of deleting things but now's the time hell yeah yeah no one needs them no, no one needs who, them. who needs all that not me certainly not exactly now let's drag that over there and boom all righty word thank you for your service i'm eternally grateful no problem. Just keep up the good work. Um, all right. So there's that. Let's see. What else? Mm. Oh, yeah. Animation layer stuff. Okay. Um, Oh shit. Hmm. Ricardo, I was gonna ask you to, to send uh, your your file to me to so I could show you that, but I think you have like a really weird custom parkour Samus rig, don't you? I think it's like it like requires like a script and stuff. Oh yeah, yeah. It's... Um, um I'll, I'll I'll show you guys the concepts, I guess, from uh for a scene, uh, for animation layers. Let's open up a scene. And let's do, let's do, hmm, what should we do? Uh, Ricardo, you could still send me that, that file and I could see if I could, if you also send me the script, I could see if I could get it running on my side, but. Um, Let's see if I can find that script. Yeah. Let's see. Let's see if there's no animation layers in this.
damn, my computer is running slow. So slow. Oh, God. The file's too big for Discord. Oh, really? Yeah. Uh, let's see. You can email it to me. Oh, yeah. Here we go. So basically, um, yeah, don't, don't worry about that just yet, Ricardo. You can, you can send it to me, like you can email it to me, but um, I'll do it after this. I want you to look, at least look at the, the concept behind animation layers. But you can see I, I have an animation layer in this scene already. Uh, let's see if it actually is working or if it's just a, a lie. Um, doo -doo 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 -doo. And there you go. Okay. Yeah. So we basically have a layer in here that is counter animating our entire like forward movement. So basically on, on this layer, there's just a key on these controls on translate Z. That's just, it's the exact motion of the translate Z forward. Uh, I'm going to dip out. Yeah, yeah, Tam, go for it. Yeah, yeah, go for it. Um, just, just get, get onto your um, retopology. That's, that's it. Just make sure you're, you're keeping up with the, the retopo, um, because we're running out of time. Um, but yeah, so there's this layer that has the, uh, the motion. It's basically the, the exact opposite of our base animation layer. Um, but the way these animation layers work is that you can, they're additive, right? So, so when I add a new layer, so if I click my pelvis and I do this little button, it's the same as a display layer, right? Where like, if you, if you add, if you make a new display layer, uh, see you later, Tim. Um, and add that object to it, you can now additively affect that. So any any key, if you if you select this anim layer, so if I if I name this crouch, uh, any key that I place on that layer is going to be applied uh, to all the other layers below it, um, and it's really cool. So if I if I Go down here and press S. Now I have a key on my crouch layer. You can see that it's maintaining all that animation from before, right? It's maintaining all of that. When I mute the layer, oop, turn it off, you can see the regular one. So you can do cool stuff with this. Like if you get all of your spine controls in here and right click, add that to that crouch layer. And let's get, the, let's get the head control as well. Add selected objects. If we go in and kind of bring, bring the character down like this, and then key, you can see that now this is a more crouched over pose. Of course, the arms are a bit weird, right? Um, and always be careful with rotation. This might not work out as well, but if we add these arms, we can get them into like more a, a, a more crouched pose, uh, pose, right? So if I get this over here, and then this one over here, See that it's it has all that motion from the the old one, but it's just a little bit more in a crouch pose, right? Uh, so I can do the same thing with this elbow. If I get this like this, let's bring this let's bring this actually back, right? 
And then let's delete our first key on that layer. So now, it's kind of more, this arm is a little bit floppy. Now, since like, now it's kind of in a more structured pose, you know? Uh, so you might have to try to counter animate that on this animation layer. But I would say just go to that base layer and start deleting a few keys to kind of get it a little bit more, a little bit more solid in there. Let's let's flop. But uh, but yeah, so that's that's the power of animation layers. They're very they're very good. Um, and so if I wanted to do 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 do, let's just mute this layer so we're back in our regular one. And let's get. Uh, let's get a look behind. Let's, let's change our scene up a little bit. So let's go. Do, do, do. Let's get a bunch of let's get a bunch of cycles in here. Let's do like two hundred frames. Hopefully everything is ah it is not. I guess I'm going to go to my base animation. Just select all my controls. I'm just going to do curves post infinity cycle. Oh man, yeah, this might not work. This might not work. There we go. Post infinity cycle. There we go. All right, so now we have a cycle going on forever. That was just with, I just liked all the controls, did curves, post infinity, cycle. And make sure you can see them by doing view and then infinity. You can see them looping on forever. Uh, but if we, wanted, if we wanted to kind of do a little breakout animation, uh, we could do like a texture layer, right? So, let me click my controls layer, select objects, then let's do add a layer with all those objects on it. Boom. And so now we can do something cool like if we wanted him to, to look over his shoulder as, as he's kind of going in here. We could find a pose where he's kind of almost like that or, or, or closer to doing that. Uh, and then let's just start, let's just start rotating this stuff, right? Let's just get like a twist in him. And we're on this anim layer, right? I'm just gonna press S to make a key. And I'm gonna rotate him this way, right? I'm going to bring this clav back. And you can see now, look, it's that same animation, but now he's kind of looking back over his shoulder. Same animation, but looking back. Now, you might be wondering, like, how do I control this, right? So basically you have to look at your key and your timeline down here. Look for that, look for that anim layer key. It shows up the same as always. Um, but that key has information, right? It has that offset information. It's basically telling everything, all the other animations be like, all right, do that, but with this offset now. So that's why it's carrying out throughout the whole piece. But if I wanted to like break this up and do this kind of during the movement a little bit, you know, then uh, we, we'd, we'd have to basically zero out all the information on that layer, right? So let's select the objects on that layer. 
it to go into slow, classic. Um, and I'm going to make sure that there's a key on all of the objects for that layer, for this, for this frame. But you can do something really cool. So let's see, right about here, right about here, I want them to start looking over that way. So if I set what they call a zero key, uh, here we go. zero key right here, boop, he's back to normal. And then he's gonna, he's gonna, well, I mean, the, the neck is nightmares, but uh, he's gonna kind of ease into that pose, right? And then you can set another key when you don't want them to look in that way, and then you can zero it out again. Uh, but like I said before, rotation gets messed up, right? You can see in the head that it gets messed up. We can try to fix this with an Euler filter. So if we go to curves, Euler filter, we'll see if that works. Nice. There you go. So that's that same gimbal lock that I was talking about. But yeah, now look at our guy. Just takes a few steps behind, or it takes a few steps, then he's like, what the hell? What's going on over there? And you can kind of change up the uh, the timing of this. So if you go into the head, you could just select all those curve or all those keys and then shift it forward a little bit to make it so he's kind of like leading with his head, you know? Maybe push this even further. See that? So now I'm, I'm leading with the head a little bit there, you know? And it's coming back in all at one, or a, a little bit ahead of the, of the body. Um, if I don't like this arm, because like see how it's clipping? Boom, like it clips through that, that leg now as it steps, we can get it into a different pose that won't, that we can, so hopefully it won't clip. Let's see that. And this is like, this is our, our additive key, right? So if we right click that and then copy and paste it onto another one and see where, okay, so that doesn't, doesn't look good on this frame. That's the problem. So let's bring it back down a little bit. Let's just copy that information. That's that same offset, right? Like I don't, I don't want to be messing with it too much. But yeah. But yeah, you can get a lot of you can get a lot of cool little texture to to a piece, uh, or to like a cycle if you do stuff like this. You know, um, this is one hundred percent done in video games all the time, all the time. Um, I'm, it, it's done in movies, I'm sure as well. Like if you attended that Disney lecture and they're talking about that scene where, where Elsa was running along and then yeah, like was stroking the wall that I'm sure that they, they probably did some little additive layer at some point in there. Um, but honestly, they probably like given that it's Disney, they they might not have. They might have just full keyed all of that, and didn't work with a walk cycle or a run cycle at the start of it. But but yeah, so that is that's the um. So now yeah, now we just have the character walking, and then yeah, I would uh, I would definitely blink his eyes during this part right here. See, see how he kind of like his eyes don't track anything. Let's see, do I have a texture on this? No. Um, but I would definitely be be sure to uh, let it just add that object. I'm gonna add the other eye as well. Oops. And then as that character starts moving over here, uh, 
I would, in, I would, in, in fact, I'd probably just at this point start to open the eyes. It's weird to be to be that open throughout. I do have a blink on that base layer though, so I kind of have to counter animate that. It's going to be dumb, but it's going to work. It's going to work. Go. And then he's opening his eyes like turbo because it's going beyond. It's like that offset still exists. So if I zero that out, but yeah, I need to do the bottom eyelids as well because they go blink up. But I'm not going to worry about that. But yeah, so definitely, definitely get a. Uh, like, I don't want you guys using that too much, especially when you're starting out, right? Like, that's like kind of an optimization thing. I'd rather you guys just get good at animating, like straight up, like straight up in Maya, like no, no, no fancy tricks or anything, but that is animation layers. Um, so Ricardo, if you wanted, if he wanted to add some, a little bit of like a glance back from Samus or a little bit of uh, texture on some of these arm movements, like, so let's go back to, the basic walk. If you if you wanted to kind of shift the weight a little bit, like make it not as even, you could go in, make a zero key right here, and then just kind of shift it over a little bit, you know, just a little bit. Not not enough for anyone to like immediately notice, but it's 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 in there. That data is in there. That little offset is in there now. And then you can kind of slowly zero that out. And it's just gonna it's just gonna add a little bit more. You could you could do the same for like each arm swing. So say I wanted this one to swing out a little bit more. a bit too much, but I'm not, I'm not bothered. So let's go, let's go even a bit more. And then let's just zero that out again. Boom. See that it's just, it's a little bit too sudden on this one. But um, yeah, you can add some texture to like a looped animation this way really easily. And that's why it's done all the time in games because we're always using looped animations, you know. But yeah, 100% valid. Um, I just wanted you guys to more know about that rather than uh, really get into using it because that again that's like something that you do a lot with like mocap that's what you do a lot with loops and stuff um i think it's it's much more important to just be good animators rather than know like little tricks and stuff you should just be able to to key stuff up and have have it be good it's like this would be fun to try it out during the summer yeah right yeah it's a, it's a good little experiment sort of thing you know um if you really like what you what you've done you can also, oh, where's the button for it? Let's see, it might be merge layers. Let's go, oops, do that. Um, mm -hmm. I'm just making sure that it's not it called anything else. Um, yeah, merge layers should do the trick. Um, of course, my computer's going to die, but you can see it's baking stuff down. And it didn't work there, unfortunately. But uh, but yeah. So if uh, 
or wait, it did. No, that was just a viewport error. Okay, cool. But basically, it deletes all it deletes that information off that um, off that layer, and then uh, bakes it down to the, the the lower one. So notice how there's no keys on this merged layer. Um, it's all baked down to that uh, to that base animation, or at least it should be. Oh, okay, frick, yeah, there we go. Um, but yeah, uh, but there's a different. There's a different button for it. Let's see. Maybe it is merge layers, but just the option. Yeah, let's see. Oh shit. Okay. So I had to I had to select multiple layers. Okay, so let's let's try that. Boop. Layers. Merge layers. Ah, power. Grant me power. Again, this might go slow. Yeah. But yeah, so like some scenes, if you do like a, a little additive pass to make like a like small things read more like a like a punch, kind of have more oomph to it or anything like that, uh you'll you you'd have to merge down a whole layer uh, for the scene after you're done with it. And then see now we just have our base animation layer in our uh our animation layers over here, but it still has all that information on it. So it's pretty nice. Uh, pretty pretty nice. But the, the only problem is that like it has it basically comes in like mocap. It has keys on every single frame. Um. So yeah, that's just uh, so that's just a limitation of the of of the process of baking stuff like that. But it's not too bad. Not too bad. It's really helpful. And uh, there's a program that if you're doing mocap, you're going to be working with Motion Builder, and it it works with layers like really well, and it bakes them down like super fast, like in a in a fraction of the time. So it's like it's so sick. I definitely um, I recommend kind of checking that out if you um, if you uh, like on your free time. Uh, again, I think it's more important to be a good animator. So focus on your animation skills more than, you know, motion motion capture stuff. Because uh, if you get motion capture and you don't know like what to emphasize or like where to or like how to shift it around, then you're not gonna, you're going to be very limited in what you can do. So I 100% think you should be a good animator first. Then then go check out the bells and whistles later. You know. But yeah, so that's that's animation layers, pretty nifty. But uh, also optional for the time being. Very optional. In fact, I'd rather you focus on different things. I just I just wanted you to know about things that are out there. All right, so that was a lot of animation stuff. Um, any any modeler crowd need any help? Like, are, are you guys struggling with like how to retopologize a, a piece? How to like? I did, I did have a question, not about retopology. Yeah. yeah. Um, I'm setting up the bust right now mm -hmm. with the reference over the spotlight, and whenever I want to model, it like engraves into the model what i'm seeing on the spotlight, on the spotlight. yeah yeah so you have something called spotlight projection enabled mm. um in order to disable that you go to brush here okay samples mm. okay turn off spotlight projection right here gotcha boom back there you go awesome awesome thank you very much and then i believe the hotkey to switch between uh, spotlight and off of it is Z. I can just press Z and then you can like drag it around. Um, so yeah, oh, yeah. It, it's really good for like lining stuff up like you're probably doing right now. Yeah, that's what I'm doing. I'm putting a bunch of blocks and ovals and cylinders around. Oh, yeah. Cool, 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 yeah. Cool. Sounds good. Thank you. No problem. Oh, Benny, since you're doing like a more realistic style character, you might want to look at this guy. Let me pull him up. 
I know his I know his tutorial for um for the heads is pretty good. Let's see. Let's see. Video. Let me find the correct one. Yeah, I think this one is it. So yeah, this guy, this guy's pretty good. He's got an he's got an accent, so just uh, you know, some people hate that on other tutorials. I don't mind at all. Um, but yeah, he's he's a he's a pretty good pretty good sculptor. So um, feel free to check that video out. He does like a, a male head and a female head, so like. Um, he addresses like the the anatomy differences and uh he's, he's really good really really uh really awesome it, it's an hour long so it's a long process but like he goes in depth he goes, yeah he goes pretty in depth and it's right on pretty accurate and like uh studied in it so um he's, he's just a good youtube channel channel in general so right on thank you yeah no problem There we go. Yeah, any other any other questions from the uh, from the modelers? Anyone anyone struggling with topology? Anyone struggling with like how to sculpt a certain shape or anything. All righty. Any animators, feel free to hit me up. I'm, I'll, just, I'll just be hanging out in here. Uh, this is basically just question time from here on out. Hey, Mike, I got a question about the pipeline for um, modeling. Yeah, hundred uh, percent. Are you familiar with like how they uh, they model environments by any chance? Yeah, yeah. Um, there's well, like, are you just asking about in general, like what what they what they do? Yeah, like from start to finish, basically. Yeah. Um. So there's a few different methodologies. Um. Probably the most common one now, like in the past, it used to be like you would do low poly stuff. And then do like your high poly sculpt with that low poly geometry. So basically, you'd have your UVs and stuff already set up for you. Uh, a lot of people use that already, or, or still. Um, the, I believe this channel, let me pull them up, does that extensively. 3DX. Um, so let's see. It's one of those news videos so this is his end result is this chandelier you can see that he starts with that low poly though and he just does regular modeling 
just this is all in Maya, no ZBrush yet. Uh, then he UVs it. And then he uh, goes in and, and straight up sculpts. He, he takes all those pieces and then subdivides them and then sculpts all that high poly detail on there. Uh, and it's really cool because he straight up has those old UVs already. So he knows that like these are already like that part of the pipeline is done, doesn't have to worry about it anymore. Um, and then he brings that into like he gets all the sculpting done brings that into substance and then bakes that down into normal maps. Um, and uh, your uh, ambient occlusion maps and all that stuff. Then he applies materials, basically what we're gonna be doing. Um, but yeah, so there's that way. There's also, what did it say? Ivana, Ditch Fire, here we go. Um, do, 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 do. There's this method, which is basically you start all the way, uh, you start everything in, in ZBrush. Let's go in. Um, yeah. Like you can see here, they're sculpting each individual plank. You see, this is all in ZBrush already, right? So it's, it's, it's this is more our method of our, uh, of our character creation where you go in afterwards and then start to uh, retopologize this stuff after you get this all baked out. Or, or, or before you get this baked out, my bad. Mm. Um, but yeah, you can see that they're just sculpting up all that stuff. And yeah, that's basically, they're just a ZBrush god and then they use uh, other programs like Maya and stuff to, to retopo uh, and then bake their maps out. Um, that's, pre that's pretty much it. It's usually like, do you start with the low poly or do you start with the high poly? That seems to be like the, the sort of general consensus. There's also on like games and stuff, there's more, oh, what is it? Let me look up skirt meshes. And then how do I find skirt meshes? Uh, one. Do this. So this guy, close, um, basically has a bunch of materials in here, right? And this looks like pretty seamless, right? Like it's like carved straight out of the, out of the wall. You have, uh, of course, some like accumulations of, of dirt mounds, but um, look, you just have different types of stone all hand sculpted, uh, a little bit of photogrammetry in there, which is taking pictures of things and then using that to create some geometry. Um, and then this is like a more scratched up version. You can see that it was, go back to that first. You can see it down here. You can see it on the steps right there, like where a chisel was taken across it, you know. Um, and you have all this stuff all these different ones and what links them together in some spots is this right here so you see i mean this is kind of an annoying gif but uh so anytime that he had a seam he just made some janky geometry over there and then it just had a, a texture on top of it that was that just alpha blended off into nothing and the rest had a um like the interior of it had that, that nice material over it. And you can see that it blends in super nice, right? Like you can't even detect that like in, in the actual game. Um, any, any other, any part specifically that you're, 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 you're curious about past that? No, I think that explains a lot of what I had in mind. Cause I know where they started from or anything, but. Uh, okay. Yeah. 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 So the, the, they're, yeah, they're just badasses. That's basically what it comes down to. You're like, Oh my God, how do they, how they sculpt this up um, to, to generate these these different. Did I show you guys Substance Designer at all? I don't think so. It's the node based way of like working with stuff. Okay. Um, basically, to, to generate these materials as well. Um, maybe I can just.
find a, a video of it rather than popping open Substance Designer and slowly thinking my way through it. But um, do, 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 do. Wait, so those spheres are just textures, right? That you can just import them to yep. a material? Oh, okay. yeah. Those are just materials that were, yeah, straight up uh, Substance Designer. Designer. Uh, cobblestone, sure. This is like a node-based way of creating textures. So like this node makes little tiles, and then you plug that in and you can see a preview of like what it looks like. And that has like height data, displacement data on it. Um, this one changes it to gradient and he's kind of chopping it up. He's using a histogram scan to make it more like binary. So it's a zero or one usually. And then uh, he kind of forces those values He's getting a little bit more bump out of there with another scan. And he's doing a uh, slope blur on this to kind of add that edge detail. And you can, see, you can see how this is, let's just full screen this bad boy. You can see how it's kind of developing. So it's basically just nodes on top of nodes on top of nodes. And then eventually it's starting to, like you can see how he's slowly developing each different part of this, right? And it's getting a little bit of grass in there, a little bit of depth in that stone. Kind of work on the color, but then yeah, like then this is your material at the end that you can just slap on like a, a bunch of like a plane or something, or like a not like a flying plane, but like a like a quad plane, like a polygonal plane. Um, yeah, so it's a lot of a lot of stuff like this. Oh, and then shit. and then working with like like the seams of it because that's gonna you're gonna run out of space right like that's gonna run into like a like a sidewalk or something so you need to make that blend nicely in there um you can usually just put like a, a like shrubbery or plant or something in there to kind of to kind of fix up that seam um yeah any any, any other uh any other sort of questions about that process no, that's this was I had wondering in my head so far. Nice. Okay. Yeah. Let me know if there's any if you're if you're thinking about anything else. Cause yeah, I'm glad to answer. Thanks, Mike. No problem.